inside the temple. Yeah. Mr. Wiggler, I do stick to you. Hey, step inside, I give thanks and the highest praise. Grandma said to my mother, connect God to speak. Hello there, everybody. Live and direct with hopefully an unmuted mic. It is the Mr. Wiggly Show, uh, live from the south of England. Uh, with me, Dominic Hawken, a.k.a. Mr. Wiggly. Thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me. Hopefully I've uh, unmuted. I will never forget the time when I checked for a good old five minutes before anyone actually kind of broke the news to me, or at least I spotted that anyone had actually broken the news to me. Uh, hello to everyone in the chat. Thank you very much to Jamie over at Geosynths for passing the baton. What a great show. I just uh, saw this these guests with that amazing drummer playing at Real World Studios. Thank you, Marshall, uh, for the audio check. Thank you. Um, what an epic, epic sounding thing. It's just like, I just love, I love drums like that. They're just oof, so good, so good. Uh, big hello to everybody in the chat. There's a load of people already, so thank you very, very much, uh, including our wonderful guest, Jim Glue, seems to have said hello around about two minutes past seven, which is really cool. But hello to failed muso. GNS was by far the first. Whoa! <laughs> and he's just heard the horn. Jen S was by far the most wonderful first guest, uh, sorry, first visitor to the chat room as we had. And Keith in Watford uh, is answering the, uh, the the question, the poll, which I'll check up on in a minute, uh, saying it's going to be Teddy, admit it. <laughs> We're to, trying to name the chow. I have my, well, one of those names is mine and one of those names is Luna Mays, but you'll probably work out which is which. Thank you so much, Keith in Watford, for the wonderful donation. Uh, you have just smashed, where do we get to? Uh, we were on 1,749 pounds. So we've just smashed 1,750 pounds. So thank you very much. Uh, that is donations raised really on behalf of Lula May's quiz that she does around about half past seven. So we'll be doing one here, uh, raising money for Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital, which is an absolutely wonderful uh, charity, I suppose. It's a wonderful hosp hospital specializing in teaching in <laughs> dear me, me specializing in looking after children uh and they do an absolutely wonderful job i know about five or six people in this wonderful group of chatters that we have uh who've had to uh, have experienced their their love and uh, an amazing abilities uh, within their own families so it's a, it's a wonderful wonderful thing um so another quick hello to uh, paul torbert synth addict sasquatch get so many music who we will get on stream get so many give me a shout after the show maybe we can get you on uh, next week if you're around that would be really cool he missed out when i caught covid over christmas uh which is totally my fault uh martin taylor wagyu uh, all the wonderful people here there's just so many uh to mention and hello to you if you are listening or watching after the live stream because i know a lot of people do i will do my best for the audio only listeners uh to, <laughs> to make up for the picture quizzes and stuff in the quiz uh but hopefully you'll get enough out of this <laughs> to, 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 to learn something i suppose uh this is the, the mr wiggly sunday live stream which is basically all about kind of we we all love since hey! <laughs> It's all about very loud horns. Thank you very, very much, Tony Duncan, uh, for the $4.99. That's very, very kind of you. Check out uh, Tony's uh, was a guest here a few weeks ago, and there's a really good stream there. So if you like this, please do, um, well, click on the like, but basically give us a follow if you're new here. It would be absolutely wonderful if you want to see some more of this. Um, and there's some really great people that I've chatted to, some great insights into everything. Uh, but, yeah, we love synths. We love uh, synth music. We love electronic music. Um, but we don't tend to do that much news or groovy stuff. We tend to try and have a kind of relaxing, chilled out Sunday evening, a few laughs, you know, a general chat about whatever comes back. So uh, there really is no agenda here. Hello to you, uh, Richard Hilton. Thank you very much for joining in. And also Inky the Cat uh, is in the chat. How about that? Uh, she is our moderator. And uh, you have to be nice to Inky, otherwise she'll kick you out. But in the history of 36 shows, this is number 36, I don't think she's ever had to kick someone out. I think one one person might have gone a bit weird, or it might have been a bot, but uh, she is in complete and utter charge. So uh, the most important thing really is to introduce my guest, who is somebody I met through... <sighs> Was it synth? Uh, was it Clownfest? Was it synthesizers on Facebook? 
mutual friends. I mean, somebody I've known of and, and, and chatted to for, for a long time. Um, but I can't quite remember where the introduction came from. But he's amazing. He is one of the nicest guys uh, in music, definitely, in terms of just being such a lovely, lovely chap. He's uh, moved relatively recently, shifted areas in the UK, set his studio up from scratch, kind of refocused, uh, has started to get releases going on. So it's be interesting to find out kind of, I'd like to know what his original background was, um, how he's actually gone about putting together the gear that he's needed to actually take things and get stuff out problem on proper labels and stuff. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. But it is the the very wonderful uh, Jim Glue, but the stage name is James Glue. I will put some links up in a minute, but he's Jim to his mates. So as we're his mates, we can call him Jim. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thanks, Tom. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jim to everyone except my mother. But... <laughs> <laughs> so for your mother that that's your stage name <laughs> and the tax man but yeah <laughs> yeah but... Hey! jennifer s thank you so much for the 899 much love to you you were one of our very early guests on here and it was just epic to have you around and i'm also a very very good friend i've known jen for, for a long long time uh, introduced through the deluge uh, group she's a great deluge user but she has uh, bought a van and uh, it's very, very tempting to follow suit, to be honest. Obviously, I'm not going to do that with uh, the ties to here. But, you know, buy a van, do it up, just go traveling with your deluge and a big battery. Uh, how about, what do you think of that? Just such a, I'm sure that the, the, the reality is less romantic than the, the thought, but it does sound kind of cool, doesn't it? It does, definitely. I wouldn't mind doing that. Just getting away, bit, bit of mobile music on the road, limited yeah, gear. Just, yeah, exactly. Because you can plug stuff into vans now. I mean, back in my day, it would have been awful. But, you know, they've got main sockets and generators and things. I've always yeah. wanted to drive across the US in a Winnebago. Maybe. Maybe one day. Again, I think the reality would be me and Mrs. Wiggly screaming at each other. <laughs> <"Turn left!" laughs> you get pulled over again. <laughs> are so kind thank you andrew brooks you are just wonderful just going to get this in before kent donates the national reserve and makes us <laughs> big love to kent kent hold on to your money today please i mean mm. not that we don't love your donations but really put it towards your your current anaglyph work you are such a wonderful person there is there is no need um honestly not taking anything away from what you give but please keep your hands in your pocket this time um incidentally there's a good picture that he sent of his i think kent's wife parking not even very close to just on top of his car which <laughs> is kind of ramped up yeah i saw that so it's like a moonshot where you just slam into the <laughs> slam into the thing as fast as you can and hope for the best like a moon landing uh mr Weedy, yeah. don't watch the movie lost in america oh gosh yes anyway sorry complete aside um Thank you so much for coming on. It's absolutely lovely to have you on. And then you've popped up on Kent's uh, stream that he's been doing every now and then on the Tuesdays, which has been good. Um, so I've got to know you a little bit more through those. Um, but what we'll do is um, I'll put a track on of yours after the quiz as well so people can get an idea. Uh, it's really cool, actually. Really. Uh, deep. <laughs> oh, here it comes. <laughs> Kent Spong. Kent Spong. Can you tell me what's wrong? He's just the man, isn't he? Spawn, I've just got to say one thing. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Hebden Bridge. <sighs> it's from the I other night. Hebden Bridge came off. <laughs> oh, was it from one of his streams? I didn't, I didn't yeah. catch it. It, it started. I, I'm not sure if it was it was the low blood sugar or, or whatever, but it started to go a bit strange. Um, oh, okay. While. <laughs> it's an in joke, but Ke yeah, check out yeah. Kent's uh, Kent stream. We're going to have to have uh, Kent and clown and the clowns have a fight off. Really, someone needs to get the Tuesday space because it clashes a little bit at the moment. All oh, right, um, Ken Lewis. Let me know. It's really our career. A the triptych oh for your trip that sounds cool thank you kent sorry i should have said got distracted with hebden bridge but thank you so so much for that and you really should keep your keep your money but it's so so appreciated so we just smashed 1800 pounds which that means so i reckon in a couple of weeks we'll we'll do the 2k uh luna may was in the top 10 percent uh i think of 
um, of donators as of. Oh. <laughs> that's getting louder. It wasn't as loud for the battery was going down. <laughs> it's got, it's got, it's got like a second wind. Uh, top ten percent fundraiser, Lula May. Uh, let me just check. Ah, uh, here, the stressful sales because that's what we originally started. Uh, was that's in that was in December. So, so we must still be way up there. I mean, it's doing so so well. So, thank you very much for for that, Kent. Uh, and another one from Ed Diaz. This is brilliant. We'll get to talk to Jim in a minute. Ed Diaz, thank you very, very much indeed for the $5. It's so much appreciated and, and also so good for our for our ears, obviously. <laughs> um, let me just find how to flip that out. There you go. So tell me how it all started then. I, I've seen a picture of you on stage with Carl Cox DJing or playing with, with strange insect heads on. I mean, give yes. us give us, give us uh, <laughs> where did it where did it all so, begin? Oh, Right. Well, it, it truly began, you know, a long time ago before I actually sort of um, even picked up a guitar, probably just listening to The Art of Noise and Tangerine Dream. And then, um, yeah, I sort of uh, then got a guitar age 15, uh, started to get into really sort of, you know, heavy metal and thrash metal and stuff. Um, which seems weird that I'm, I'm now doing sort of electronic music. I, I kind of um, I think I had to go through that teenage rebellion phase um, and sort of grow out of it. Um, but yeah, and then in my 20s, um, really got into um, producing electronic music big time. And uh, yeah, when I was, well, I went to uni in Sheffield and then after uni, um, got a couple of bits of kit. I was just using a Commodore Amiga Um like Amiga 500, I think it was, or 600 at the time, and uh, and that hooked up to a four track and and a, a base station, the original base station, and a Korg X5DR, and that was that was kind of what I had then. Um, what then sort I've of joined... year was um, was that? Well, what oh, that we was talking? around about 95, 96. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then I teamed up with um, with a, a mate of mine from Derby who basically moved cities to then form a group with me and set up a studio in Sheffield. And, uh, and then another guy, uh, Bradley, joined us. So we were like a three-piece then, and that's where the, the whole insect thing came from. So we were called Outsect, and, uh, and we had a, oh, the, right. yeah, the, the, the strap right. one was the future has six legs, you see. So, um, it was, you know, we had six legs between us. And, uh, and yeah, we used to go on stage wearing these amazing sort of praying mantis heads that um, a lo- we got a local artist to, to make for us. Uh, we sort of played, Brilliant. you know. Yeah, basically, yeah, played some gigs and stuff, and yeah, and uh, and then we ended up we, we we were doing pretty well, sort of around Sheffield, sort of filling six hundred capacity venues um, fairly regularly, um, and then yeah, we ended up on the bill with Carl Cox at the Octagon, which was just you know, <laughs> thank you, Richard Hilton. Richard Hilton, thank you indeed. That's so so kind of you, an epic. Uh, previous show with Richard, who's just a wonderful person. Go check that out. And uh, in the back catalogue of the Wiggly Live shows, it's only a couple of months ago, but uh, yeah, real, a real amazing, amazing man, Richard Hilton, who, if you didn't know, is the, is the keyboard player with Sheik and Nile Rogers, but has worked with basically everyone you would ever, ever want to meet or ever work with in the, in the, in the music industry. He is amazing. Anyway, so Carl Cox on stage. Yeah. Oh, should, should mention Rich Hilton. Rich Sorry. Hilton's going to be on the ProSynth Network um, uh, YouTube stream this coming Friday, isn't he, as well? So. Is it this Friday? Brilliant. Yeah. I'm glad you remembered that. I wasn't sure who was coming on. Okay, so uh, you can always watch mine, but actually on Friday, check him out on ProSynth Network with Failed Muso, who's also in the chat on the YouTube, because uh, I'm sure he will be giving some more amazing insights. I mean, it's just brilliant having him on to hear him... Uh, chat about yeah, stuff but just, what, an, what an amazing guy you know scratch absolutely. the surface and you you'd be like oh yeah i met him once I, yeah, he, I, he, he was, <laughs> was like, that bono yeah he we were his band for a while when the, the edge didn't turn up yeah there's a, what yeah <laughs> it's I know. just incredible I know. Just amazing guy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so pro, pro synth network um is uh, a great show on friday it starts at seven on youtube pro synth network look it up but check out yeah. the face group book as what is wrong with my mouth today? Facebook group today uh, as well for the ProSynth Network because there are a bunch of lovely, lovely guys. Hello also to Rebecca Radical, who's just popped in the chat. 
Um, she is amazing. She is. Oh! We're, on We're on fire. Thank you, Will Joseph. Hold on, just what that is incredible. Thank you so much. If you hold on one second, uh, I watched last night a uh, Scottish live stream, which I will post or stick underneath this video in a minute to try and find it, uh, which is amazing actually. It was almost, it wasn't an open mic night, but it was a really brilliant selection of very scottish acts and it was great singers poetry rebecca is like punk uh she's like everything you want to be uh, as a young punky kind of kick-ass guitar singer just amazing and she's absolutely wonderful i think she's going to be absolutely huge as well uh, so keep your eyes open but look up rebecca radical on Bandcamp and uh, uh everywhere really and also check out um clown fest and the whole uh clown group on facebook as well because she's that's i met her through there in fact rebecca yeah tollington saying can you come on as a guest i'd love to have you on as a guest uh, i've been promising a mix of one of your tunes for a while as well which is underway but it'd be absolutely absolutely brilliant and the show was great however will joseph kent spong is a rolls royce with his donations i'm a tuk tuk i hope it helps a bit oh brilliant the tuk tuks are those uh kind of taxis in thailand aren't they everyone just kind of hangs off the back thank you will joseph it's every little tiny bit i have no idea what the 100 dkks even is danish krona? krona yeah uh whatever it is it's absolutely welcome thank you very very much indeed and very very much appreciated i'm guessing we probably smashed 1850 now which is just even better um so on with the show um where were we insect heads oh yeah and uh, then, Cole Cox and then, the octum. Yes, and then Richard Hilton on Friday. So we're back. We're back yeah. with Carl Cox. Yeah. Back. In <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I imagine most people who've been to Synth Fest know the venue, the Octagon. It's it's just an awesome yeah. space, you know. Um, it's absolutely crazy doing that with like full blown laser show and everything, and really decent PA. And um, yeah, that was kind of like the pinnacle. Um, but we also um, got lottery funding and, and set up a record label and. and did a, a number of sort of well oh, nice. small number of releases um yeah w one of which uh, I, I did some sort of uh, breakbeat sort of drum and bass stuff on on one release and um uh this this ep is now goes for like 90 quid on discogs or, or more it's um it's wow be it, possibly because i actually i think i took most of the copies to the tip eventually <laughs> <laughs> Unwittingly <laughs> made this so valuable, <laughs> and um, even so, yeah. that's epic. Crikey. Yeah, it's, it's quite something that um, is actually. So that was around. That was mid nineties when you were uh, running a label. Yeah, then. yeah. Um, so, um, so we were called Outsect, and then I did some solo stuff under the name of um, Dan Tian, um, which was more sort of breakbeaty drum and bass stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we, we ended up sort of uh, going our separate ways. I, th I think. It was kind of because it then started going, becoming a bit more business-like. It really killed a lot of the creative spark for me and the magic, you know. And it's it's kind of yeah. like, mm. um, but then uh, I ended up after after you know parting ways with with uh, Paul and Bradley of Outsect. It was still friend, good friends with um, some both recently. Nice. Um, um, but yeah, and then I teamed up with another mate of mine who has basically been a roadie all his life um, since the age of 16 and he's, he's sort of my age. Uh, I won't say how old that is, but it's, it's a big number. <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, I ended up sort of teaming up with him doing um, sort of a bit more sort of electronica, downbeat sort of stuff. Uh, and we ended up releasing a load of stuff through, uh, do you remember peoplesound.com? It was one yes. of the early sort of, yeah. I was on a so panel with them and some bloke yeah. from mp3.com years ago. Excellent. Oh well, yeah, well, we did. Well, yeah, it was weird. Yeah. The, the mp3 yeah. guy was was he could have been selling lawnmowers. It was just mm. he didn't really care what the stuff was. It wasn't about the content. Yeah. It was it was back yeah. in those horrible heady days of pre.com crash when everyone thought if you just mentioned the word internet, yeah. a bit yeah. like if you say the word crypto now, it's obviously going to be an amazing idea. So anyway, yeah. yeah so yeah, exactly. do yeah do. <laughs> Sorry. 
Yeah, we, we, we had, did a number of licensing deals with them, um, which included, well, the sort of load of promo CDs. Um, you know, those CDs you get free with the Sunday papers. We were on yep. a couple of those. Um, There's about 1.8 million units out there in the end. Wow. It's like a staggering number of CDs now in landfill. But um, It's weird because putting giving away music for free on the front of magazines is, is cited as one of those key moments where music was devalued mm. i have no axe yeah. to grind on either side of the thing but the idea that music was available for free mm. was kind of the beginning of the end of the the labels charging so much money and and the switch and ultimately to you know spotify and all the rest of it and became very very hard to justify yeah. you know high costs of stuff anymore it had to happen but um it, it had been yeah. free on the radio forever you know the idea music's always been kind mm. of free but where people have had to pay for it, it's hugely expensive. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was a, a nail on the head. But it didn't half help the CD pressing industry pushing yeah. those things out. I mean, absolutely, millions of stuff. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we wow. shared um, album space with like Groove Armada and and Kenobi and stuff, and like you know some some you know some quite named artists, which you know we were like just relatively well, completely unknown sort oh, of outfit. Cool. Um, cool. But yeah, it also led to one of my proudest moments, which was um, my mum and dad used to do a lot of uh, collecting charity, collecting for the Red Cross. Right. And they'd be at like service stations, etc. You know, and they used to collect a particular one on the M1. And, uh, and my dad noticed people buying this particular Sunday paper that had the CD on that we were on. And um, oh, nice! Uh, and and he was asking them about it, going, you know, asking, you know, oh, what, <laughs> what, why have you bought that paper? And like, and they're like, oh, oh yeah. the CD, and it's like, oh, oh my that. son's on that. You know, <laughs> that like, is fantastic. Uh, that was like, Talk, yeah, talking of key like, moments as well, the wonderful Rebecca Radical oh, has joined us. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you, love? Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. We've we've spoken briefly. Well, we haven't actually spoken. Yeah. I I sent a message to Rebecca saying I absolutely, utterly love your track. Can I get the you know some vocals or can I work on it? Can I do anything? Um, which hasn't happened I yet. Which is extremely <laughs> embarrassing. It's still I haven't been doing anything else, so that's good. It really is a fabulous track. Um <laughs> But yeah, I watched this amazing thing last night, which was just really special. Wasn't I think it wonderful? I just, I just saw a post from you saying it's something you performed at, and I wasn't sure whether they'd had to whether it was live, live, or they'd rerun it or something. There was some technical problems, but um, it was hey. meant to be live. It was meant to be live. So last week, um, there's a venue in Glasgow, and it used to be a bank, but the, um, the people that have bought it over, they specifically are going to use it for live stream concerts and stuff. So they've they've brought people in that are really good at the camera stuff, the sound stuff. So we got everything right, but then our internet was just against us, so we had to stream it last night. But Mark, bless him, was pretending that it was live. He kept going, can we go back to the same and bank? <laughs> we're sitting watching it like, That's we right. know you're not there. <laughs> and if he would have got away for it, was it not for your pesky <laughs> comment about <laughs> you, you're going to watch yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, no, it was it was really special. There was a it was a London night um called the Cashmere Club that a friend of mine used to put on, which was similar, and used to get a mass it, it ended up as a sort of weekly thing, sort of open mic, but actually, but you'd get you know mad people coming down. Um and that it just felt really special. It reminded me of that. Everyone was really into kind of just the They're event, all the thing, right? Really supportive. And it was funny you said this is what it's like in Scotland because it was it was very Scottish. Only yeah. The accents, the whole thing—it just felt like um, like a view into to a world that I hadn't ever kind of seen before. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what you want. I mean, it was a alternative Burns night. So the thing is about Burns, um, most of the celebrations that happen in Scotland, it's all very middle class, really expensive and stuff. And Burns mm -hmm. would have hated that. So the whole point of the alternative Burns supper, my pals have done that for over 10 years now. Every year, it's never any more than a fiver and they deliberately get everybody who speaks with the really Scottish accents, has their own twang, because that's what he would have wanted rather than these yeah. middle class who pay for a yeah, dinner yeah. and hear a recital yeah. of, you know, yeah. as red as a rose. <laughs> like, and there was some there was some really great tunes. I, I was amazed that like that there was a lot of rap based yeah. stuff. But like the whole London rap thing is is so massive now. But rap with a Scottish accent is just epic. 
I'm a boss. I'm a boss. I'm was one of these tunes. And it was just like, <laughs> By the way, the, the Scottish the Scottish hip hop team is actually really big. The problem is that we have that sort of self hatred for our accent, like, right. and no other genre apart from hip hop. There's just that there's that embarrassment thing about our accent in Scottish hip hop. But I think the the scene is so big here. Eventually, people are just gonna have to take us seriously. You know. <laughs> yeah. <I don't... laughs> I think so. I mean, the, the the whole kind of West Country accent kind of yeah. kicked off, even though it was Goldie looking chain kind of thing. You know, <laughs> from a semi funny attempt, but the kind of London uh, is almost a caricature of itself now. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it has gone oh, massive. Yeah. Like nine out of ten of the tunes in the top <laughs> ten are right. Well, they're either from the the Disney film or they're kind of London based drill rap stuff but yeah. and it's all good it's all good but it's now become so common it's mm. like there is time for something else and uh, there's something there's a menacing undertone to the scottish accent in general yeah. I mean, it could be very subtle as well there was some subtle stuff but in general if you got some yeah, guy no, giving it some in a rap it's great because it's, it's it's like gangster gangster scotland but anyway there is something about our accent that's just more hard-hitting right i mean if you swear in scottish it sounds way more threatening than any yes. other accent. yes exactly yes. Threat, threat, it just means it more i think it's absolutely that's <laughs> yeah, really um, guttural I... isn't it it's like yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, you should come on and we can play some of your tunes and stuff if you want. Do a Rebecca Radical Sunday evening, you know, more I'd about I'd be well that. up for that, yeah. That, that would be brilliant if you wouldn't mind, yeah. I'd be well uh, up for it, yeah. Such a lot of stuff out there. And I think, um, I do, I, I'm not blowing your, your trumpet on you, but I do think you're on really on the verge of greatness. I think you've really got something. It's different, oh, it's special, you. it's it's... It's it has a real feeling and it's meant and you just get on and do it and you really don't give a monkey so I really love it so yeah let's do that I'll give you a shout after the show and uh, hook up in the next couple of weeks that would be thank epic you. thank you yeah thank you well thanks ever so much for dropping in if anyone else wants to pop in after the quiz now I think um yeah I'll put the link back up again but brilliant thank you so much Rebecca round of applause in the chat big love hearts thank and thanks in the chat and we'll speak to you in the next couple of weeks yeah see you later my love. All right, nice one. Take care. Bye. See you back. Oh, she's so good. She's so yeah. so good. Have you posted Have you... the link of the? Of... Uh, no, I'll do that. Right. I will find that uh, when when Mrs. Wiggly's running stuff. Um, link. Cool. Scotland. Yeah, jump. Cool jumper as well. Um, so just to jump a little bit before we kick off the, the, the quiz and everything, because what we'll do is we'll talk music properly after um, yeah, yeah. after the whole quiz and it's settled down, we'll talk some proper stuff. Um, between that kind of – the label obviously kind of became a bit too corporate. The whole thing became corporate. And, and now, did you carry on with music? Did you drop out? Did you go through a complete kind of mindset change or – like I said on on uh, Kent's thing, I've never really sort of left it. Um, it's it's always just changed form, really. So, um, so when I, I partnered uh, with my mate Andy doing the stuff on People Sound, that carried on pretty much until we both started having kids. Not not together, right? Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like that that time in life when we kind of like oh, and uh, I I did have a, a studio basically that was pretty much a room within a room in the upstairs, the biggest bedroom in the Victorian terrace. Right. Was, the isolation was really good. I really went to town on it. Um, you know, so I, I could work in there till 3 a.m. and none, none of the neighbours ever complained. Just obviously didn't hear anything. Um, but that eventually needed to be ripped out, you know, when, uh, when you know, my yeah. partner at the time was pregnant and it was just kind of oh. like, oh. So yeah, that that kind of so it's kind of life going away a little bit. Yeah, and so I, I pretty much sold a room full of kit as well, and just ended up working sort of in the box on the computer at that point, um, and then just doing more sort of guitar stuff in in, right. in bands. So yeah, I right, then sort of joined a, a, a funk covers band, um, which was really really good. It was really good. We played like Derby University Ball a couple of times and stuff, and we used to have a regular slot. Um, sort of oh, amazing. Bar and stuff. It was just really good. Hey, Lula May. Hello. Lula May's in the house. Lula May's in the house. 
and Mrs. Wiggly's in the house. <laughs> that is, Lula May has her own hey, square. Look at that. Look. Yeah, she's got is it? Where am I even pointing? This square yeah. thing. She's not sharing my thing. So the button that yeah, I had that right. shared mine <laughs> now just makes us look like that. This is how she used to look on the same thing. Now we can have double Lula May, which is which is just epic. Mm. But yeah, cool. So all good. Um, right, we're going to do a quiz and then we're going to play a really amazing track from James's alter ego from Jim, James Glue. Uh, and then we're going to have a chat properly about uh, the way uh, he's working, how the studio, what the stuff he's chosen, has put together, and how he's gone about actually getting this stuff out, uh, plus any other questions. So if you've got anything in the, in the chat question wise. <laughs> Ahoy, Wigglies, says Wagyu. Thank you so much, <laughs> Wagyu. That is just so kind of you. Ten pounds from Wagyu smashes the 18. I think we must be 1850 or 1860. I mean, just brilliant. We're getting so close to 2,000 pounds, which is just kind of you, sweetheart. So big up to Lula May. What is that? Is that? What are these? Are they They're just shapes? No, they're leopards. Leopards. Leopard. Leopard spots a blue leopard. So I'm so glad. so obvious when you talk about it. So thank you. I did do a boo to daddy for that one. I mean, I've got a boo, boo. somewhere. Boo. Boo. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie, 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 dokie. Um, Wagyu, when are you coming on? This is a good point. Come on the show, Wagyu. This would be really, really good. We're going to do a quiz, Luda May's quiz, which she does every week, just in case you haven't heard of it before. I will do my best uh, to fill in the gaps for anyone who can't see the screen. Tooth it... news. <sighs> oh, tooth yeah. news. Tooth news as well, yes. Guess what happened this week? My tooth fell out. Gonna... Yay! Oh, oh, wow. Yay! <laughs> Just brilliant. I don't know how close you can get in there. That tooth hung on. Well, we're not going to tell you when. It's quite recent. It hung on for a long, long time, at least two weeks. Oh, come on. About two months. Yeah, but <laughs> since we showed it on the um, on the show, it was like at least a couple of weeks. So yeah, it's that, been yeah. there for 10 years. Um, yeah, remember, if you're in the chat, remember to use live chat, not top chat, because live chat, you'll see everyone's chat streaming pass. And it is only for fun, because sometimes your answer might go into the chat. You're very welcome to join in. And you might look as if you're ahead of someone else, but it arrives in a slightly different order to us. So uh, Mrs. Wiggly's word is final, as in, really, that's a lesson of what, life, what, really. What, what? <laughs> that's just, just how it is goes. That, is that just for the show? Is that... <laughs> no, no. It's absolutely true for absolutely everything. Um, oh, at least it's been recorded. Sorry. <laughs> now, we have, uh, let me, oh, I was meant to do that instead. Um, we have an honor roll or a kind of top 10 of uh, quiz people, which I tried to put together based over the last three weeks. Uh, and it is here. And believe it or not, I sent him a message before the show. Fat Dust is in the lead with three and a half. Now, in the real world, Ty Unwin and Kent Spong would be off the top of that chart with so many, but we only started it three weeks ago. So uh, there's a load of people on one. This is all compiled from Mrs. Wiggly's notes. Wagyu has two and is in fourth place. Synth Dog, who was our guest last week, has two and a half. Kent Spong, who's a genius generally, uh, has got three. And Fat Dust, who was our guest the week before, has three and a half. So uh, it's all to play for, really. I mean, any of the body, anybody on that list and anyone who wasn't on that list could probably get three in one go this time. So I'm going to try and keep that updated. Um, so we've got it... Uh, you know, ready and waiting every week. So, it, without any further ado, I'll just check the comments. Are you ready, Luna May? Are you ready, Mrs. Wiggly? <laughs> I'm trying to listen then. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, are you ready in the chat? Yes, I'm sure you're ready in the chat. Okay, it's time. It's time for the quiz. If I can just find the right button. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
What time in Thursday did my tooth finally come out? What time on Thursday did your tooth finally come out? 6 p.m. Nope, but you can have another go. Oh, and there's a bonus. There is, but you need to get the time first. Midday. Uh, not quite. You're quite close. close, actually, with midday. 9 p.m. Mm. from Rebecca Radical. No, I'd go around the midday time. 11 evening time. You've got to be closer than Ooh. evening time, Morgan Jr. 11 a.m. Nope. Close. Oh, Will Joseph is definitely oh, close. Uh, it's going to be 11 30 something. 11 37. No. Lower. Lower. <laughs> Gen X has got it. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done, Gen X. Absolutely well done. That was absolutely epic. So, yeah, Janice goes on the list. She's back on there. I think she's – I won't flip back to just see how many she's got. I think she was already on the on there with one point. Now, there is a bonus. Bonus. Come on, then. Give us your bonus <laughs> question, Luna May. Any idea of what lesson it was in? Ah, uh, yes. What's, it was at school. It was at school. English. Nope. Not English. Good night, Thorsten. Thanks very much for joining and uh, love to your wife. No. Maths, no, against Bong. Science. No. Kind of makes sense when you know what it is. PE. Yes! yes! <laughs> very, 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 very good PE. So, one in the bank for Jim Blue. Excellent stuff. Okay, so eyes down. Ready for the next round. Are we ready? Luna May ready? Mrs. Wiggly ready? Jim Glue ready? Here we go. How many teeth have I lost now? Eight. No. no. Inky says she got that, Mrs. Wiggly. Can you check? Got what teeth? Not, well, I guess Ten. the eleven thirty-four. Oh, Inky five. said PE. Sorry, uh, no. She gets a Fourteen. Point. No. All of them. No. All oh, Paul Otto's close. Wagu's close. Fifteen. Forty-two. Yeah. Someone. Forty-two. <laughs> no. Can you can you see the chat? Okay, Jim. You know you click the chat yeah. button. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. No um, one's got it yet. Well, Joseph's on 12. Wagu's closest. Wagu's uh, close. Wagu? Rebecca's got 11. Wagu's 18. got 20. No, there was a... Oh, seven, uh, yeah, 18. Wagu's got 17 up there. Oh, Prometheus UK as well has got oh. 17. Um, is he oh. above or below Wagu? Oh, my word. The pressure. That's a lot. The pressure. Wagu's got it way above I it. I missed it completely. Wagu. Yeah, Wagu. Oh, sorry, Prometheus. Wagu got it. Well done, Wagu, sir. That's a yeah, lot of two um, very visits. It is. I think it's a 20. Do you lose 20? 20, yeah. Mm. The correct amount, says Kent, in his usual stylish <laughs> way. I imagine Kent's probably <laughs> sitting there with his long cigarette holder and his smoking jacket. Velvet dressing now. <laughs> <laughs> the correct amount. <laughs> it was very correct. Okay, so we're on to... No, his dark Vader, oh, no, no, that was oh. someone else. That was Darth Sponge. That's his best mate. Oh. Yeah. It's not uh, it's not Kent. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so all right, here we go again. Back in the real world. What was the name of the two fairy who collected it? Oh, tough. Hey. Oh, what was the name of the tooth fairy who collected the tooth? Emily. I don't think anyone's going to get this. No. Uh, Tabitha. No. It's not no. like a real name. 
Kind of. It's not a common Ooh. name, yeah. you know I mean, is it? Yes, Ken. Yes, seventeen out of twenty have gone. Three left. Probably been another three left. years. No, Wilma. No, from Synthetic Jasmine. From Steve Powell. Daddy from Keith in Watford. <laughs> Certainly it wasn't me. I'm not a fairy. <laughs> Titania the Tooth Fairy. I like mm-hmm. that. It wasn't. Um, I don't think anyone's going to get this. Mm-hmm. Should we see what Can it begins with? Clue? Um, it begins with M. Begins with M. Mildred. Two syllables. No, three. Is it, oh, the short name of it is two. It's, yeah, it's got like a short version, isn't it? Millicent. Uh, Boris. <laughs> Lady Aptitude missed the question. Uh, it's very simple. We're after the name of the tooth fairy that picked up Lula May's tooth last night, the 17th one that she lost. Thursday night. Thursday night, sorry. Mary's cloak, Mola. That Magdalene. would be a good name for a tooth fairy. Mm. No, honestly, it's not even. Magdalene is, I'd say, pretty close. Madeline? No, it's worth half a point. Mm. Not really. It's from a book. Oh, is it? What yeah. book's it from? Oh. Isadora Meets the Tooth Fairy. Isadora Meets the Tooth Fairy. So if anyone in the chat's read Isadora Meets the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> No, they're, they're just going to Google it now. I bet Adamski has. Hey, Adamski, have you read Isadora Meets a Tooth Fairy? And if so, <laughs> can you remember what the name of the Tooth Fairy was? Madison's a good one, but it's not. Mm. Magdalena. Oh, at least so it has a, there's a precedence been set. Manic, Magatha, Magu. I don't think anyone's going to get it. I'm resting my hopes on uh, Adamski. No, should we give in? Give it one more, one more minute. One more minute. Pro. <laughs> Adamski <laughs> saying it's. Uh, oh no, he's going to let me down. Miggy Net. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Morgan Who, Juniper. That's, uh, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's a Google. That's a Google. That, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, full marks to him. Uh, Miggy Net, rather. Sorry. Well done, Morgan. <laughs> Never would have got that. Yeah, that's definitely a, a, a Google, isn't it? Brilliant, 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 brilliant. I, I think he deserves it for that, to be honest. Anyone who can quickly whiz to the shops, buy a copy of Isadora Moon Meets at 2.30 and read it in the space of uh, <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what he did. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, what are we on? What question are we on now? Is it question four? Yeah. Okay, four. there's about six, six-ish questions, I think. All right, ready, everybody? Here we go. What's the best food in the world? What is the Ooh. best food in the world? Ice cream. No, interestingly. Mm. I have it every day. <laughs> uh, Synthetic says it's pronounced mignonette. I guess it would Waffles. be mignonette. Filet mignonette. Yeah. Waffles, no. Chili con carne. Pancakes. No. Spaghetti, no. Healthy food, don't be mad for me. It's not, it's not unhealthy. It's not. It's not oh, somebody's typical. got it. Did I see Have they? it? Or? Yeah, yeah. Go down, it down, 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 that's one point. Who, who, who've won so far? So Rebecca's well, got a point. We've got Janice. Jim, yeah. Jim's got one. Inky's got one. Wagu one. Morgan Juniper uh, uh, Googled one. And <laughs> Rebecca's got one. <laughs> we could put a G next to those. Just, you know, <laughs> they, don't, they, don't really, they don't really count. Okay, doke. Well, this is flying by. Are you ready, Lula Mae, with your teeth? All right, let's get back in the real world again. Ready, eyes down. What type of cake did I make for Mrs. Berry? Ah, what type of cake did you make for Mrs. Mm. Berry? Now, Mrs. Berry is, is a school teacher, and she was lucky enough to get a cake. Put the chat on. She will be so, lucky enough to get a cake. I hope she's a cake. On that. Good, oh, good answer, because Portuguese. Nice one, but mm. no. Pastel no. del Nata. 
crunch. Yeah, one got it kind of. No, I don't think we're that, that Where good. Where did you see oh, it? Right. Special skills <laughs> for that one. Like, like this. Uh, rice cake. Like, get down. Like, kind of, they're, they're oh, I think that's the best. What question are you on? Uh, hey. All right, I think these are answers to the previous one. Uh, so hang on, mm. keep an eye on it, Mrs. Wiggly. They are oh, streaming past. They're going so yeah, they're fast. Going quite fast. Madeira I mean, cake we've had. There's, there's, there's there is chocolate, chocolate in there, but it's it's, it's a, a chocolate something. Yeah, there. I'd say it's a something so, chocolate. Can't just give chocolate. It's got to be. Is it a chocolate mocha? Cake. I'd say it's a something mock, something oh. chocolate. We've got yeah. chocolate from China. <gasps> Kids is saying White he doesn't chocolate. like my sample buttons. He says he's going to take a blowtorch to my sample buttons. <laughs> How very dare you. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying the show anyway. I'll try and press them less frequently. Sorry sorry to uh, offend you with my buttons. Um, it's, not a, it's not an ingredient chocolate cake. It's a type of chocolate cake. Would that be enough? White chocolate yeah. cake. Like a white chocolate cake, but not. And it's not a dark chocolate. Mm. It's for a particular type of it is it person. like different ingredients to make diabetic yeah. chocolate cake. Oh, oh you're, you're on the right, right lines. Sugar-free chocolate cake. Not quite. Oh. Triple chocolate. You're very close though. It's it's like that. It's like a a particular uh, vegan chocolate fine. cake. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> It's a vegan chocolate cake. And Wagyu as well. Wagyu points each? I think Wagyu got Point one. And there was somebody else I saw. Hang on. Okay. So Above, I think Wagyu, uh, Sentient one as well. Do you know what? I've, I've got all these lined up as well. I had the, <laughs> I've forgotten to press them. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Luna May. Um, I got it. You got it? Right. Okay, let me find, instead of, instead of doing these silly banners, let's do... Um, the intro again. All right, next question. What life-changing thing have I asked Mummy and Daddy to do from the week after next? What life-changing thing have you asked Mummy and Daddy to do starting the week after next? Get you a dog. <laughs> That's every week. That would be no, tomorrow. That's every day. But yeah, it kind of works. <laughs> it's not get a dog. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it is get a dog, but there's something else. Vegan chocolate cake from kids. Hey, you got mm. that as well. Yeah, very good. Okay, suffer uh, Become vegetarian? Yes! Yes! How did you yes. do that? Very good! <laughs> Cool. <laughs> Mine, no. It's Lula May's psychic powers. It, wow, something <laughs> like that. Were you concentrating on sending him the answers <laughs> through the through the tubes? <laughs> <laughs> cool, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. Well done. Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. Stop. As we were eating our burgers for lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I was having mac and cheese. You were. She was having mac and cheese. So, yeah, that's it. And you've got cool. the tips. We're going to be, uh, the, well, vegetarian, right? Yeah, we, From a uh, week after next. With, well, we've got Excellent. pretty much very. And the first week we were allowed anyway, to have but... a Sunday roast, but then after that, we might have to, to cut those out as well. So, I think that's a good thing, right? Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Telepathy going on from Steve Powell. Jim Glue is too smart, says Adamski. <laughs> this is very, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Way too smart. I think you're on you're on tie level. Um mm. I'm typing No, don't type with your toes into my <sighs> Right. Uh oh yeah, there's a there's a silly one, isn't there? Oh, As yeah. if these were really sensible. Um <laughs> <laughs> okay, eyes down. Last main question. What did the arrogant pickle say? Oh, gosh. Hey, Dr. Mike Metley, thanks for, thanks for joining the stream. We're now trying to work out what the arrogant pickle said. <laughs> <laughs> You're a doctor. What? He's, not, he's a doctor. He's very, in fact, mm. 
You're so bright. Nice, nice try. <laughs> oh, no, you've, you've, I'm stumped at this. Juniper's been on the Google again. I'm a kind of a oh. big deal. Big deal. Oh. <laughs> He's they're, in, they're invisible points. Yeah, he gets a one G. <laughs> he gets a one G for that one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so far, he's got two G. <laughs> I forgot you could probably Google some of the jokes. Yeah. Don't jar me is good. Definitely don't jar me. Right for uh, back in the. Yeah, sweetheart. Back in the real world, I think we've got a couple of um, big, big, big questions. So this one is is much more much more sensible. So uh, yeah, Mark Morgan is laughing. So it's definitely uh, <laughs> definitely uh, a bit of googling. <laughs> but yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, all right. So Luna May's got a big question, and Mrs. Wiggly's got a big question for you. So yeah. so much 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 more uh, more serious then. Okay. So are you ready, sweetheart? Yeah. Okay, this is Lula May's big question. What advice? Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, everything's gone quiet. Sorry. That's my bad. I thought I'd drop out and leave you two oh. just to chat and then realize oh, all right. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, what what okay. advice? Do you want to ask that again, please? That was my fault. What advice would you have a 10-year-old you? So what advice would you give a 10-year-old you? Me. Probably be... Go with what you believe in your heart to be the right thing don't worry about what other people think ever mm. yeah yeah and actually well dave's in the chat saying don't give up i think that's kind of the same thing isn't it yeah believe in yourself yeah morgan's saying stay in school <laughs> kent is saying don't base jump drunk yeah <laughs> 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 oh, no, he's just whizzed off the top of the screen. No, I think that's a good one. Do you think that's true? So you believe in yourself and don't care what other people say. So you just go for it and don't give up. Does that sound like good advice, Lily? Really? Oh, just in time to take my head off. Dr. Mike Metlay, this rocks your world. It does ours as well, I hope. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we have one of your books uh just ready to uh go for a raffle which we will be raffling uh next week dr mike medley metley is incredible and if you check out the uh, proceeds network that we mentioned earlier uh he was a wonderful part of that on friday so go check that one out on uh youtube proceeds network give him another plug really really good guy knows everything there is to know about synthesizers basically a wonderful personality and a very enthusiastic man to boot and a doctor so, uh, you know, he would probably know the answer to all of these without worrying about it. But uh, Okay, so Mrs. Mrs. Wiggly's big question. Um, let's bring her back in. Are you ready, Mrs. Wiggly? Um, yeah, so... Oh, hang on a second, I have to give you your jingle. Um, so what advice would you give um, an 18-year-old you? <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be uh, along the same lines um, <laughs> I, I thought about it uh, more closely but um, I think it's pretty much summed up with do everything with a good heart and you won't go far wrong nice that is nice actually that's, that's a very Richard Hilton style answer actually very very good and through the dark days when there's no, you can't see the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, everything is temporary. It's very, a very Buddhist thing, but, you know, nothing lasts forever. So, you know, it's, it, you have to always take the long view and, and don't sweat the small stuff because, you know, everything passes. Wise words. Definitely wise words. Uh Dave is saying, Dave, it's got some great ones. You're, you're young and you'll yeah. get wiser. Be true to yourself. Uh, 
Dr. Synth is in the chat somewhere. Hello, sir. Um, Dr. Synth's advice was bye. Bye. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, bye, IBM. <laughs> I think that's, to be fair, I think that's half, a, <laughs> half an answer there. Um, remember that everything is all going to be all right. Nice one, Dr. Mike. Absolutely. Adamski is saying, follow your dreams and not the yellow brick road. Paul Torbett is saying, be a mentor. That's a nice touch mm. as well. Um, loads of good stuff. Wow. Um, thank you. We've got one extra little thing, actually, before it's your bedtime, which I think we can just squeeze oh, in. Yeah. Luna May has been very, very busy um, making her own dog video, which she edited and put together all herself. You may well know uh, that we are uh, under extreme pressure to buy a dog. <laughs> Incidentally, <laughs> um, I haven't seen. How's the it's chat? What's that? That's like the least, yeah. So, uh, how's the boat going? going? <laughs> I think if I, uh, I'm in danger of doing some big feedback. Can anyone see how the vote's going on the, um, uh, do you know what I mean? The, um, the, the dog name. The poll. I put up a poll. I don't know if I can. Let me just see if Ooh, I can yeah. view it without breaking anything. Hang on. So this is, let's stop that. Uh, how's the poll doing? Where is it? We've got Bentley with 80% of the votes. Oh, very good. Teddy with 20% of the votes. Yeah, Bentley. Bentley was my guest. No, it wasn't. My guest. Well, no, you it wanted was Teddy. Luna May. No, Luna May came up with Bentley. Because you wanted Teddy, though, didn't you? Yeah, that is a made up. Oh, sorry. No, I understand. When I. Sorry. It's your, they're both your names, but you would have preferred Teddy, wouldn't you? Yeah. Also, I didn't mean that you, that you hadn't thought of it, darling. I didn't mean that. Um, oh, dear. Now I feel bad. Sorry, that came out all wrong. Of course, they're both your names. It's I all about me. <laughs> not Bentley me, me. Oh, 80% went for Bentley. Hang on a second. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Uh, let's flip this back. Oh, we are all on screen. Good. Yeah. So can we do Bentley, maybe? Or are you still up? Are you still, it doesn't matter about the chat. We did if it's a brown dog, Teddy, and if it's a white dog, Bentley. If uh, it's a brown dog, Teddy, if it's a uh, white what, dog, what about, Bentley. What about the one mm. I like, Coco? That's a different dog. That's well, the black okay. dog. That's We're now talking dog. multiple dogs. It's terrible, really, <laughs> honestly. It's a, Rebecca Radical said everyone's going for Teddy now. I've, I've really messed that up totally. Everyone said, well, I think Teddy's better. Well, I think you get Teddy, whatever. <laughs> I'm just thinking about standing in the middle of the park going, Teddy! Or Bentley! They're both equally bad, I guess. Well, Bentley sounds a bit like... Do you remember that video of that guy Benton. chasing his dog? <laughs> Benton! <laughs> Benton! <yeah>. Benton! <laughs> Bentley! <laughs> oh, no! <God>. Benton! Benton. <laughs> yeah, Morgan saying get two dogs. Tetley's quite a good one. Oh, right, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> For complete digression. Yeah. <laughs> Luna May has made a video, um, and and I think it's pretty epic actually. She made it entirely herself, all on her own, uh, about with dogs and various different things. So I will now going to play you this, and she's got a tiny little dog quiz to go at the end, right? So let me see. This is her video.
Wow. Well done, sweetheart. Absolutely brilliant. So that was all Lula May's work. Stirring the soup of the dog, just as someone said. That Wobbly would be a good name. Oh, Waggly. Waggly, that's nice too. Waggly. Epic work. Waggly. Thank you, my darling. That was really, really good. Now, you did arrange a couple of pictures. This is also uh, off our own back to get uh, a little quiz going. Some of which we don't actually know the answer to, I don't think. So I'm going to show you a couple of um, dog pictures and you have to tell us the breed. So, uh, here's the first one. Can anyone tell us the breed of that dog? That's a King Charles Spaniel, is it not? I think, yep. are we right? Do we know that one? Yeah, yep. King Charles Spaniel. So that, that is the current absolute favorite dog of Lula May. Not, um, not the, not the Teddy or the Bentley version. Cause they, we kind of, I, I love Charles to be honest, but, uh, okay. Dog number two. It's very cute. Mm. It is. I don't know what that is. Uh, Richard Hilton sang a Prince Charles Spaniel for the last one. Do they call him Prince Charles in the uh, Kent Spong saying Cocker? I don't know. Yorkie. Okay, so that's a Yorkshire Terrier. I'll go, Kent, I'll go with Kent. Kent will know. Did you know the? You didn't know what that one was, did you? So that's a Yorkshire Terrier. It looks like quite a young Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkie. Okay, so yeah, everyone, everyone's pretty adamant with that one. That's kind of cool. Um, okay, so this is number three. Oh, do you know what that one is? You do know what that one. Okay, so I, th I think Kent will know what that is if it's, if it's what I think it is. Dave says it's a Tarquin. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Husky. Husky, husky. Yeah, loads of husky. Yeah. Oh, they're brilliant. Ken said he has to hoover his husky twice a day, though, literally. Because <laughs> <laughs> they just like, <laughs> the fur is just <laughs> absolutely crazy. Okay, three more. We've got, oh, I have no idea what that is, but uh, do you know what that one is, Looney? You do? Oh, cool. Okay, so. Yeah, I think. Dave says yeah. this one is a Larry. Labrador. Oh, Carrie? A Labrador. A Labrador. Yes. Is it a Labrador? Yeah, I think it's yeah. a Labrador. Hmm. Like, yeah, I guess, the one at the back certainly looks like a Labrador. Okay, yeah. Oh, bless. All right, so a couple more. Let's just oh. flip back. So um, this one. That's one of those kind of Andrex puppies, isn't it? I know. Oh, you know that one? That's also a Labrador, isn't it? Yeah. Is it the same? Oh, trick yeah. question, Luna May. <laughs> Another Labrador. <laughs> Labrador 2. Well done. Uh, Labrador. Uh, let's go. Um, let's go to the next one. Yeah. Oh. I know what they are. I have no idea what they are. Don't you know? Are they the no. queen don't, dogs? Don't say. Corgis. Yeah. I think they're the other they corgis, aren't they? Yeah. That's what the Queen has. Yeah. She said that. Dave's uh, got the strangest names for dogs. I think he's I think he's naming the dogs rather than the breed. Is uh, Bill and Ben and Glenn. <laughs> 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 after the after the breed here. Nice one though, Dave. Uh there's two more. That's not a dog, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rubber chicken. I'm pretty sure that's not a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Snap that one in. That yellow bird. All Big right. bird. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those. Um, this. What is that? This that's is the last TQ. one. I, it's almost an that's ornament. A... Does... Is it a Pokemon? It's an ob... <laughs> <laughs> Richard Hilton says it's, a, it's an Oberheim. The last one was a golden retriever, not a lab. Okay, well you sound you know you sound like you know what you're talking about, synthetic. So I'll go with that. A Fenguli, skinny dachshund. I sing the body. What's that doing? Uh, ah, uh, hang on. Got someone to put Pomeranian. Tribble. A triple. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <It's just fear. laughs> Does anyone Dave's just played Susan, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's <laughs> 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 
brilliant. <laughs> a Pokemon. Yeah, exactly, Richard Hilton. Uh, uh, Morgan Juniper, rather. A lab experiment gone wrong. <laughs> a little ghost. <laughs> Not quite. We'll possibly well, uh, dr mike saying possibly a quiche and puppy I, I i go with that he sounds like he knows what he's talking about I, it's very weird isn't it we'll have to find where you found that picture and um and, and see what we can do but thank you excellent huge round of applause for luna may and her wonderful <laughs> quiz <laughs> big up luna may thank you so much let's get rid of this picture then we can actually see what she's doing there you go luna may And I think it's probably time for bed. It is. It's bedtime now. Oh, thank you, Lily May. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you, Mrs. Wigley, for being so You're wonderful. You're very welcome. Thank you, Jim, Big for coming to you all. Oh, Enjoy the rest no, of the show, pleasure. everyone. Thank you to everybody in the chat. Just while they head off, I just want to say thank you literally to everyone that's been donating so far. Um, I just want to run a thank you video because as oh, far as I'm stuff. aware... Oi! As far as I am aware, uh, this is a list of everyone who's donated uh, so far via Super Chats and so forth. Hang on a minute, we'll get this through. So I'll just run this uh, very quickly, and then we'll have a listen to Ray's good track, night, and we'll talk proper synth. So good night, Lula May. Good night, Hi. Mrs. Wiggly. See you all very, very soon. See you at the same time next week, hopefully with uh, maybe Rebecca Radical on. That would be cool. All right, take care. Thanks ever so much for your help. Sleep well. Um, okay, so yeah, huge, huge thanks to everyone. If you're not aware, all the money raised from Super Chats and all that kind of stuff on here goes straight to uh, Great Ormond Street Hospital, which is a hospital uh, who help children. And it's absolutely amazing uh, the work that they do. So there is, I hope, a uh, thank you video somewhere around here. Um, this one. Hey, step inside, I give thanks and the highest praise. Ground myself to my mother, connect God to space. Within the hallways of the hearts of mine, in the state of being that I am as I vibrate. At a rate, oscillate like horse crystal, my mother, her brother, I know, and solid is there. Now I'm saying, our heart is the brightest, the sun, so we'll let it shine away. You're what laughing and fell up each other and loving my like this. Someone say to your feet, synchronize this energy, symbiotic and sacred. Geometry, contemplate the symmetry, and the symmetry as we integrate the knowledge. This wisdom, see what the symbols mean, and what is what the temple be. With a life force, energy resides in the chemistry. Bioelectric being the top, I'm indefinitely. Proceed and proceed to the physical machinery. Conceived by the source, recognize that the blessed being. rolling and I can't breathe. Crime shots, they never hurt me. One love, energy, and sex deep. Find your line to the champion town Best man move to the energy Sunlight bread in a pond we One love set your heart free Find your line to the champion town Find your line to the champion town Brilliant. Like I say, thank you so, so much. If you did donate today and you're not on that list, you will be next week. It's really, really kind of you. And uh, we're doing so well. Really, really good. So it's such a such an honor to be able to do this and to have people to watch uh, what's going on and to also donate. Uh, just wonderful. Um, this is the amazing James Glue, uh, Jim Glue's stage name counterpart, um, with... <laughs> Uh, a really, really good tune. Okay, this is uh, this is unwanted lullaby. So have a have a listen to this and see what you think, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it and uh, all the rest of stuff around a Jim and his work. <laughs>
Nice, really nice. Love the rhythm on that. Um, let's not play that because that really will get us banned. Um, <laughs> I, I guess you'll probably get uh, all the uh, any revenue from this stream for that. <laughs> not well, the uh, never know. Chats and stuff. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> the few the few dollars that we make off the back of that. We'll hopefully yeah, I'll, 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 I'll stick that with the uh, 0. 0.005 exactly. cents from yeah, Spotify exactly. or whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good. I mean, lots of love in the chat as well for that. Really, really good. I like oh, the, cool. the, the groove of the whole thing, the sounds of the whole thing. Your voice sounds amazing. Um, yeah, and it's different. It's really different. Someone was saying... Um, was it a touch of Peter Gabriel in the chat? I think someone was. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Actually. Dr. Mike was saying that, um, which actually yeah, it's very true. I've not thought about that. Uh, so, yeah, lots and lots of love. Oh, Wagyu says he's made an NFT of this stream already, so it's available on the <laughs> website now. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so we've all missed that. We're all too slow. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to um, shout out to your brother. Is, it, is your brother's name Clive? It is, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. that's brilliant. There was, uh, I think I got a screenshot somewhere of uh, you, you, your brother got in contact to say, I've just seen you appear on my, um, on, uh, yeah. on my Facebook stream. Just hold on one second. Thank you very, very much for that. Yeah, Jim's brother Clive was like, I've just seen this. This has popped up on my YouTube feed. I follow that guy for his daily <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I've done it. I've got was, a follower who knows what's going on. Yeah, so he, he's actually, he actually lives in Brazil. Um, so, hey, Clive. 
Um, yeah. He actually uh, lives out there. His wife's Brazilian, and he moved out there a while ago and built his own guest house um, up a ridiculously steep hill. Um, oh, nice. You can actually find it on, on, on the internet. It's called Bus Stop Brazil. Um, if you want to check it out, it's abs- it's just paradise in a place oh. called Parachi, um, sort of midway between Sao Paulo and Rio. Oh, and yeah, wow. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, it does sound incredible. But, it does uh, sound incredible. Um, just five pounds. Thank you so much from Synthetic. Another fun show. Go veg. Yeah. Some of this money may have to go to hearing aids due to the mighty wiggly horn from Synthetic. Thank you. Yeah, this is very, very true. To be, It's definitely got second wind. Um, that, that horn is just, it, it, it was powered by a car battery because the power supply wouldn't take on the horn. It's like a big um, kind of lorry yeah. horn, I guess um but uh yeah if you haven't if you haven't seen it let me just pop it up that's what the horn looks like um and then we stuck the incinerator over the top because it got too noisy but even that's so basically you're listening to it with with tissues still in the end yeah. with a dustbin over the top <laughs> i think perhaps you just need to sample it and trigger it that way yeah so yeah well that's what this one and then people people moan that's the air horn it's not it's not quite the same. I mean, it does. It's, I think people just kind of send money just to watch me wince <laughs> with, with pain, basically. Yeah. Um, right. Let's get rid of that for a second. Uh, thank you very, very much indeed, Synthetic. That's very kind. So um, how did you go about, because that tune's proper release. It's all out. It's, you know, it's out there. It's on a label. It's downloadable. You can buy it. You know, we will get copyright stri- copywritten struck for playing it. And you will probably get a couple of dollars for it, which is great. That's no problem in the slightest. Um, how did that all come about? And what uh, what did you do? Um, I mean, it's it's self-released basically through uh, DistroKid. Um, but yeah, I, I just sort of decided that there's no point all these tracks that I, I sort of you know work on just sitting on the hard drive somewhere uh and for me it's kind of like um like a punctuation mark a full stop you know it's there the track's done i release it and that's it and otherwise i you know because i'm never really happy with anything that i do you know there's always some kind of thing that i think oh i could just improve on that but you know um i can't remember who it was who said that um art is never finished merely abandoned um, and mm-hmm. the, I think that's very, very true. I think there just mm-hmm. has to come a point where you're just like, right, that's it. I'm d- I'm done with it now. That's as much as I, I can sort of do it and, and then release it. So, yeah. That's yeah, release, releasing is a point at which it's kind of finished, isn't it, really? When, yeah. For me, when you run out of time, I've, I've said it before, I leave things to the last minute now because I know it doesn't matter if I start two weeks early or two days early, it'll still take up mm. all, that, all that time, you know. Yeah, the how do you find this stroke? Yeah, yeah, quite, no. quite. How do um, you find absolutely them? fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure they can actually do gapless albums on there yet. Um, right, that's something I need to look into because uh, I mean, one of the projects I've got coming up is to kind of formalize what I've been doing live more into actual sort of um, dedicated tracks because I wrote yep. a, a set for doing live that's nothing that I've done before and I wrote it really quickly and I'm really quite pleased with it and and I need to somehow get it down into a more tangible form um, right that that can actually release so so that's kind of where you know what I'm I'm going to be doing next and ideally it would be nice to do that as a sort of gapless album if at all possible because my live set is kind of seamless really it just sort of carries on you know one track runs into the other i never really thought about that um, yeah that's really because yeah. i mean if, if you haven't come across distro kid it's one of the uh actually really good services a yearly fee um and then uh basically they will put your your release that you supply to them across pretty much all the formats and i guess the only ones that particularly are worth you know looking into itunes uh spotify apple music mm-hmm youtube music and all that incidentally i played that off youtube music i subscribed mm-hmm. to youtube uh because i got so fed up of the adverts and i was doing a lot of work on youtube it's actually not bad and uh, the music content mm-hmm. on there is really good uh so yeah as, as an alternative if you are paying to subscribe to something like for example spotify and you might not like what's the recently been going on apple um, apple music or youtube particularly yeah. I think youtube got a really good thing you get a bunch of other stuff as well so if you happen to watch a lot of youtube it gets rid of the adverts as well 
um, yeah. but as a service, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Cool. Um, Excellent. Lots of things in the chat about Bandcamp, and you know, yeah, I've, 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 been, yeah, I've, I've been persuaded to uh, to actually get my stuff off on Bandcamp. So that's what I've been doing recently, um, and just generally when I have a break at work, I'll, I'll upload a tune or something. Um, so I'm, I'm gradually shifting all my back catalogue up there. And I think people are absolutely right. It probably is the way forward to actually um, kind of put a bit of value back into music. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think that it, that's very much a two-way process. People enjoy um, actually, you know, buying music again and, and sort of supporting the artist and, and you know, trying to sort of put some value back into it. So, you know, it's, it's absolutely brilliant. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. BG Oli was had made quite a funny short video, and he had a point. Actually, he was saying his experience with uh, what, what do they call it, Bandcamp Friday or Music Friday, where all the royalties yeah. go to the artist, which is a great idea. He said, in practice, no one buys your stuff except on Friday, the Fridays, and yeah. a lot of people forget to buy it on the Friday. So, which is quite an interesting <laughs> thing. He said, <laughs> please, if you're going to buy my <laughs> stuff. <laughs> don't wait till friday just buy yeah. it you know you know i don't mind getting the reduced royalty rate yeah. um because he's definitely made less yeah. <laughs> and to be honest, he's doing some really cool stuff yeah and and compared to all the streamers it's it's you know it's mega bucks it's like how many tens of thousands of plays would yeah. get you the same sort of earnings it's yeah like, exactly no they've they've been doing some really good stuff haven't they a very very good reputational kind of nice way of doing things and you're right you know the uh even without the fridays the the, the revenue is good from there um mm. i was thinking about putting some i haven't really put much of my stuff out recently it's all it's all around yeah you can hear it on youtube and all the rest of it but i was thinking about putting together a whole lot of stuff with the um with the stems and just making mm -hmm. it available like that um because mm. i think that might be of interest to people as well because I mean, you can basically go and watch the music on youtube or consume it in various places that i've made um because i've just been kind of banging it out there rather than sort of thinking i'm going to make an album but i think if you i'd be quite interested in the stems to the stuff that i'm buying so you mm. can just wrap it all up in a kind of kind of presentation stems box um there was a a question oh ken lewis they just back to clive does he write music as well or is he just living the high life on a big he, hill he does. um but um he's so he got he got into sort of writing stuff ages ago when he was living in London. Um and uh and my brother's stuff is like it's it's kind of um in some ways I wish I could kind of get to where his head is at because he he doesn't really sort of follow musical conventions. Um mm -hmm. and as such is able to be really quite abstract and he likes his, his taste is so eclectic, it's absolutely unreal. It's just anything from sort of you know the most bizarre noise music to whatever you know and it's just and he, he sort of writes in a very sort of linear fashion um but he doesn't right. release anything it's just purely he just enjoys making music and noises and messing around on his deluge yeah, which cool. is by far his favorite piece of kit hence the collect right. right i made some mm -hmm. deluge videos way back in the day so hence he did he yeah subscribe. that's cool that's yeah, cool. exactly. Um, and he says thanks, by the way, because he's oh, found them really useful. Thanks to him. So, That's yeah. thanks to him. That was brilliant. That's why I got, got involved in, in making videos, actually. Someone on um, uh, Gearspace or something was asking a question about a deluge, and I said, you know what, I'll just make you a video show you how to sample on it. Mm. And then it came out all right. Everyone was like, oh, that's great. I'll make some more, you know. Yeah. Um, cool. Rebecca Radical was just saying, Bandcamp's been amazing for me, to be honest. Stuck everything up for free, but does mean if people can afford to, they'll buy a single track for my, far more than I put the price as. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, actually, I know cool. two people who've bought Rebecca stuff, which is one of which is me, and another which is a guy from Universal who loves it. So, um, so yeah, I think people do support cool. it. It'd be far better to you know put it up for free and then say, but mm. if you want to pay a pound or whatever. Mm. Um, Dave was also saying, in amongst names for dogs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and can't support that through higher artists. Tidal is next. Everything is also around. We're all musicians. Follow what the benefits do. Um, yeah, interesting on Tidal. Pound for three months of Tidal until 15th of February. I'd say that was really mm. good. T mm. I subscribed to Tidal because the quality of the audio was yeah. lossless. And so I was using it a lot in the studio as comparison tracks and stuff because there's no point in getting an MP3 and trying to mix mm. some back-to-back stuff. Yeah. And I stopped in the end because it was too expensive, actually. 
um because i was paying 15 pound a month or something which i just mm. in the end i just thought i'm not using it enough and there was also a whole lot of stuff out about um them hyping some of uh kanye's releases and stuff it all got a bit of a mess mm. but i think i think that's been sorted out a pound for three months is uh or a pound yeah. a month is very good yeah highly recommended because the audio quality is exceptional yeah. and the some of the recommendation engine is to me pretty good i don't know if you ever flipped around on tidal or any of the other streaming services what's your um not not tidal um i mean uh, um spotify I, I don't pay for myself i've kind of like got a shared sort of thing with that um <laughs> apple music is my um uh, usual one that i go to which i find the quality is slightly better than spotify i'm not sure if that's just in my head but right um, right oh spotify please nope. <laughs> <laughs> i think they missed us yeah i, they missed us. <laughs> I don't care i don't care about no, oh, yeah you know it's the quality um, it's, only, it's only really for compare i always compare when i'm mixing stuff i always put other music on you know just to, all mm -hmm. the time flipping between it and so tidal was a great way of getting high quality audio just to flip between you know and then i started listening to it anyway because the playlists on there that were yeah that were really um, good. let's let's talk monitoring what what do you use there i have uh their dyne audio um m6s i've had them for a long time they right. weren't cheap uh i think they're probably the kind of 1600 pound range for the yeah. two i mean i've literally had them for years they're, they're we when i used to run a studio in chiswick we had big really expensive dyn audio main mm. monitors yeah um and the guy behind uh dyn audio also came and helped design the studio so i got mm -hmm. mini ones for me um sadly the big ones are kind of kaput now they did just mm. yeah very old but um no, yeah and i love them i've got used yeah. to them um the only thing I would say, we get power cuts sometimes here. Um, mm. And when they, because we live in, in the middle of a woods, basically. So there's bound to be trees falling down and stuff. But when you get a power cut, what happens is there's some, some kind of emergency thing kicks in. So the mm -hmm. power goes off for about two seconds and then it just goes thonk. And then it mm -hmm. goes off again and goes thonk. And, and three or four times this thing. And the, and the push of the thonk coming back in has blown the speakers. It always blows something. Yeah. Um, and the first time it happened, I sent them off and got them repaired. But sending speakers, it was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. The second time I asked them what actually had gone wrong, I said, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to, you know, fix it myself and worked out what it was mm -hmm. that had blown and fixed them. But they're brilliant. It's, it's more what, you know, I'll tell you what I do have is called a mini DSP, which is a little box mm -hmm. um, which tunes the room. Yeah. And that was like a, made much more difference than the monitors so mm. nowadays you've got it built into some amps and stuff but here yeah. the output of the desk goes into the monitoring through this dsp yeah you, you do the room with the microphone and yeah. it corrects the phase and the balance and the difference is light and dark yeah you um, can use what are, uh, what are you using um well i've got a general Eck 8030s with a 7050 sub um nice and then nice. i i use sonar works just to, i mean i've i've got right. it pretty flat anyway just with acoustic treatment and uh, i'm really limited in here as far as speaker placement goes but it, they're, they're still where i initially put them thinking this is probably where they're going to have to go um and it's it's flat to within plus or minus four db except for a little bit down the low end wow um, i mean that, but yeah, that's really good I've and, never and then, I've got, near that. then i've got sonar works doing the the final bit but I, I sometimes measure with room eq wizard as well which will actually output the um filters you need for a, a mini dsp um gotcha yeah. so sonar works is doing what my yeah. mini dsp style thing is yeah. doing right it's it's analyzing because i've yeah. had that for ages it just sits there but yeah what are you saying about using the ups it's just too much power i think mm. to, to, to for the ups to take over which is really annoying uh brian the amount sorry. Of gear there. <laughs> yeah exactly i mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe for the speakers, I, I, if I remember, I switched them off now, which is probably just yeah. as bad. Brian, get so many music. Brian Oliver, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing just great. How are you guys doing? Oh, really good. It's so lovely Hi, to Brian. see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for calling. You you missed the show because I had COVID just after Christmas, and it was all a bit last minute. And thank you so much for joining us. And we must line up a proper a proper proper show so you can talk about some of the work that you're doing but um i mean brian is a a musician for life who kind of dropped back into work and family 
and came back into music. It's always been music there, but kind of took a dip throughout his life. And now, now in the later years is now just full on music again and enjoying every minute of it. Right. You've got some great gear there. Yeah, it sounds so much better the way you tell it, but I mean, it is brilliant. And you're making live jams with this amazing concoction of epic moogs and much cheaper Casio bits and pieces, like a, a collection of things. It's just so esoteric. It's, it's unbelievable. So we'll, uh, we'll get on and have a, have a proper job. How have you been anyway? Have you been making a lot of music or? I've been doing a lot of jams, uh, Nice. We just did an epic one this weekend for the uh, Hardware Jam Group, uh, talking about all the ads that YouTube puts up everywhere. So uh, uh, they're putting it up even when you're not right. kind of monetized, right? Aren't they? Yeah. So we basically took all those ads and turned them into a jam. So. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> nice touch. I like Excellent. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hardware we're, we're jams. Hoping, we're hoping we get all the revenue from all of them. <laughs> <laughs> hardware jams if you haven't come across it is another uh facebook group uh of which inky the cat is one of the major players in there and they do a jam a week based on uh, a kind of uh a topic i guess and uh brian is one of the main contributors there every week there's some great stuff going on all different uh abilities and equipment and so on and so forth loads and loads of different stuff going on which is really epic and uh as if by magic, Dr. Mike Medley is live as well. Hi, Dr. Mike. How are you? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wiggly. Wow. What on earth is that? <laughs> that's, uh, that's my on-air voice from my radio station. It's so oh, good okay. to see you, Dom. <laughs> and, and please, please do give my please do give my fondest regards to your two lovely ladies. It was it was my singular honor to meet them today. Thank you. That's so kind, and I will do. They had a, they had a ball. So I think you're a, you're a virgin as far as the Mr. Wiggly show up until this. Uh, I are in fact, and I've I've just popped my cherry. <laughs> but well, you're very welcome. You're very very welcome. We've got one of your wonderful books, which is actually waiting to be packaged up actually i was looking i had it behind me for a while i was going to show it but um you know what uh, it's i just i i don't need to talk about it i'm just going to say thank you to everybody we're we're coming up on our 2000th sale wow and my and my quarterly royalty for this book is going to pay for some house repairs that we have desperately needed for a long time so people are if people are wondering you're all you're really benefiting me guys and i really really do appreciate it so thank you all much love jim what a great pleasure to to finally have a chance to hear your voice that was a lovely track you really do have a peter gabriel voice and brian i can't wait to hear what you're doing (laughs) oh thank you very much that's really cool. I mean, my voice isn't that great. I'm I'm just quite good at editing, I think. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's not quite the same. Right, Martin Taylor, the wonderful Martin Taylor, uh, won this book. Oh, well, you know, you can't trust the author on that one. He's a jerk. <laughs> yeah, you know, it says if you just about to. My, it's like this wonderful synth gems. This one I'm just keeping in the packaging, but it's uh, it's the it's the partner book. Uh, he won these on this is push turn move uh yeah. they make a great pair he won those with gaz uh on gaz's stream and very kindly uh decided to donate them back over here to, to raise some money for great Ormond street so we're just working out the best way to do it and um, we're going to be running some kind of raffle a pound or two you know and maybe try and get uh nick on sonic state to uh trail it as well just to try well and just be just be sure you include pulse width modulation and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got that on this week's show, actually. Absolutely. Uh, someone's loving your T-shirt there, Brian. Um, I missed it as it was. Oh, Adamski wants your, wants your shirt. So yeah, if you could one. just package it up and send it in, that would be yeah. true. Yeah. Adamski, yeah. thank you. That's how, I start, that's how I start every one of my radio shows. Um, <laughs> I, I come on and I actually chug the entire can of seltzer and then with that 20 second reverb all the way up i let out the most horrendous belch and that's how people know that the show has started (laughs) oh you've got a you've got a fan in the audience dave who is the epic namer of dogs i have a huge amount of respect for you dr mike how did you discover music 
Well, the reason that came up is because Dave and I have been having a conversation. Uh, he brought up the fact that uh, Bandcamp has a a very – the more you listen and the more artists you follow and the more recommendations you look for, the more difficult it is for you to navigate the UI of Bandcamp because Bandcamp uh, is not designed for people with very, very large collections. And uh, I have to confess that, you know, I – I had completely forgotten that my way of using Bandcamp is unlike anybody else's because I run a radio station. And um, the way I discover music is people write to me at, you know, music at radiospiral.net and they say, hey, I'd like to be on your station. We're, we're very lucky. We've been on the air for five years. We do ambient music, space music, experimental music, electroacoustic music, and the occasional, you know, lounge piano. And, um, the uh, uh, people come to us and they 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 submit Bandcamp tracks. So when I go to Bandcamp, uh, I've got a yum code and I go there and I download the track for free and uh, I curate it, which I'm now 500 tracks behind. Um, but I'll get there. Uh, and then it then it goes into rotation. And we we often feature new artists uh, in special programs. We have we have programs. I'm afraid they're very late at night for the UK. Um, we're at uh, starts at about 2 a.m. Uh, That's UK Radio time. Spiral, did you say? Where can we yeah, find it? Radiospiral.net. Nice. And yeah. uh, and Paul, it's uh, we've never had Don Slepian on lounge piano. We have other people playing lounge piano. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's that's how I do it, Dave. And I'm and my my work, um, my work doesn't line up with anybody else's. And uh, Dave says, I'm not, and I don't have people sending me music. But how how do I find, find new music? people then? <laughs> I guess and, you have to listen to Radio Spiral. <laughs> well, you know. Um, and Dave, to answer your question, um, everybody has a different way of, of finding new people. One of the one of the things that I talk about actually in my uh, in my bio in the back of the book is I don't collect synthesizers. Everybody, I, I, I keep getting interviews from people who are saying, wow, you must have this most incredible synthesizer collection. And I've probably owned half of uh, the yeah, third of half of the, the synths in that book over time, but I've gotten rid of them all. Um, I collect people. I have no interest in limited edition synthesizers because every musician I work with is a limited edition of one and the creativity that I get out of them is different every time. So um, it works the same way for curating music on the station. Uh, people reach out, I talk to them, I get a good feel for them and I bring them on board. And unfortunately, if you're, if you're searching uh, and you're you're trying to find music that you can discover and, and link up to uh, the the curation uh, process is um, is something that you have to sort of work out for yourself. Uh, you know, if you, if I would, you know, what am I going to say? Yeah. Listen to radio spiral.net. If you want to hear a whole bunch of new artists that nobody's ever heard of, because we've got a bunch of new artists that nobody's ever heard of. Cause we, we're nonprofit. We, we lose thousands of pounds. We're actually located in the UK. We have a, we have a server outside of London and, um, we, we lose thousands of pounds a year. We don't, we, the only revenue we take in is tips and second life, which adds up, but it goes right back to our second life expenses. And, um, you know, we, we do this for love and we can't pay royalties. So anybody who doesn't sign a waiver, who's got copyright instead of creative commons on their releases, uh, we can play anybody who does creative commons. We can play anybody who doesn't, we have to stay away from, but it's really amazing. The people who have signed, we've got Robert rich. We've got Eric wallow. Um, we even have a few tracks from nine inch nails. Cool. Um, oh, we had, but, uh, but, the amazing keyboard player from nine inch nails on here for a, a while ago. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? It's more, um, playlists of the A&R of today, really. So in, yeah. in the, in the old times, you know, the yeah. A&R guy would be kind of, filtering and you would be kind of played to from the radio stations and you would then go out and buy yep. your selection exactly and, and, and you know people on, uh, people nowadays talk right? about ooh gatekeepers we don't like gatekeepers without gatekeepers we've got millions of people making music now some of it's amazing mm. um <laughs> oh hey hans good to see you um <laughs> and morgan to, to to answer your question 
Um, you're welcome, Dave. To answer your question, Morgan, yes, Second Life, the virtual thing. They've been going for about mm, 15, 15, 16, 17. No, no, actually almost 20 years now. I've been on there with my avatar uh, since 2007. And I've made a ton of money um, because they, the, 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 the virtual money in Second Life is actually a tradable currency. You can actually cash it out. And there aren't many people making an entire living there, but you know, think about it. Uh, uh, your average Second Life concert takes an hour. I walk down here in my sweats. I sit down. I turn on my equipment. I say hello to everybody. I jam for an hour, just having fun. And I look up, and I've got I don't know ten, twenty, thirty dollars real of real money in my tip jar. You know, well, so I've got a go. I've got uh, a Second Life. <laughs> you know, no, it's it, cool. I did. We did um, some some film launches. Um, Transformers 3 launched in Second Life, a whole bunch of stuff for, yep. for another time. And, and you really know, it's good. not for everybody. It's really not for everybody. And that's not a bad thing. You know, you know, uh, cricket's not for everybody. Uh, dark beer isn't for everybody. Um, you know, and Second Life, you either get it or you don't, and that's fine. All right. So, so hold on. Just I'm, uh, go, I want to talk to Hans. Let me, let me get out of here. Let me, is, let me talk uh, to Hans. <laughs> hold on, Hans. How are you doing? I don't want to talk. I'm here for the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the strudel, please? Uh, do you know I don't even have any jingles of strudel type stuff <laughs> anywhere <laughs> ever. There is nothing. There is no strudel. Nothing at all. Hello, Hans, Hans Strudel Man. <laughs> I have three taiko drums if you wish them. How are you doing, sir? Have you have you? Do you know where Kent Spong is by any chance? He is downstairs, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. And how's your work? <laughs> I, I, he, I think he has gone to Hebden Bridge. <laughs> oh, yes, no. Perhaps that's where he has gone, yeah? This is getting far too clear. <laughs> it is. It's Very getting nuts, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Waggy wants to know where his anagraph is. Uh, I saying is loving the headphones. Oh, it's oh, my, oh my god! Oh my god! Is that Kent Spong? You fooled me! So what are we talking about? Because I didn't get to hear anything. Well, we want to know about Jim and his career. Are you hijacked? I don't mind. Dream. That's cool. I was just about to find out about. You know about how he'd released all his music, and now it. Dom, have you? Has it ever occurred to you to actually let him talk before you let people like me in to shut him up? I mean, oh, no, just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh dear. <laughs> Sorry. Dear, dear, dear. Um, yeah. So where were we? <laughs> just I'm really good. Focus on. Uh, uh, Anyway, focus on Jim for a moment. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone again. <laughs> so, Jim, uh, bring us up to date uh, from your release that was uh, obviously uh, is out there now. Talk about the future just a little bit. This is all we want to know. And then, and then that we can tick the yes. Jim Glue box. So, so, so there's two things I know that people wanted to know. One was about the studio and the kit, and the, two, uh, the second thing was like, what's going on in the future. And then I will pop you back like that so everyone can can talk and listen but yeah go ahead cool. so what's what's next on the, on so, your list of amazing uh accomplishments um, yeah i mean the main thing now my focus is is playing live so um yeah i played that gig at jules's place um at the back end of last year in november and and that went down really well Basically, yeah, a lot of this is yeah, yeah. about we we lost a very good friend last year, a guy called a guy called Matt Evans who was um, just an yeah absolutely awesome bloke. He was like the job peel of our generation, basically really? just such a champion of music and the nicest bloke. He basically made everybody he met became his best friend. He was just absolutely that and and singing a lot lot of friends i was just like right this is it i just i take the bull by the horns and and just go out playing live that, that's kind of like my aim and now i've moved to derby as well um you know i want to sort of try and get something more set up here so if there's anybody out in derby i know where neil wharton's in derby um so yeah i want to try and sort of meet up with other electronic musicians and try and create something here 
uh, totally. as well. Sort of, you know, yeah. Totally. So anyone, anyone Derby based in the chat? Where were you before Manchester? Yeah, Manchester. So um, sort of more sort of Chilton, then I moved more sort of outside um, sort of Altrincham, which was just handier for work. Um, I still actually work in, in sort of Nutsford area. Oh, right. um, but, but I'm mainly sort of, you know, um, working remotely these days, like most people. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, Neil Wharton's in the chat, so cool. Um, yeah, oh, we need Neil. to get in touch and, and get something uh, get something going. And yeah, Andy Brooks oh, is on nice. about driving down as well. So yeah, 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 yeah totally, totally. So so, cool. and if any, anyone's got any any you know sort of slots going for for gigs, either you know virtual or in actual venues, then then let me know because I'd love to play. And then, yeah, that's very much where my focus is now, and where this rig to the side of me is is sort of um, getting set up. So I've got the uh, the the holy trinity of Electron, really the uh, Digito, Noctitrack, and uh, Digitact there um, with a couple of pedals and the Korg NTS One. That's kind of like going to be the basis of my live rig. And we were kind so, yeah. of chatting briefly, but that, how are you getting on with the Octatrack? Um, well, that's my latest thing, and it's oh, it's such a a steep learning curve on that one and it's very much you have to figure out what on earth you want to do first and then work out how to do it on that thing because it can probably do yeah, it yeah 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 yeah. but there's, there's like so many different ways to sort of approach a problem with it and i think a lot of people just get it and they're like uh i don't really know what i want to do and you know how it works it, it just works in so many different ways um but yeah so i'm, I'm still learning that i've got some some a template set up with some scenes and and you know I'm probably going to just use that more as a performance mixer for the other devices rather than use that particularly for content i want to use do some live guitar looping on it though so i've got like um a uh Marisenzo synth pedal down there which i really want to sort of get you know sort of some synth loops using that because uh, guitar is my main instrument really i'm not much of a keyboard player truth be told um, but you know, I love writing beats and I love playing guitar, so that's kind of yeah, where my sort of well, focus is. That could be on interesting that. as well. Um, Dusty Rivers just saying, CFO oh, yeah. Canfer State has got some slots open, cool. Um, and I know uh, Mark stepped back slightly from running all the night, so he's delegated a little bit of it. Uh, but it would definitely, mm. um, it would be definitely worth checking that out. Uh, cool. Ian Dignant is saying, What plugins you got in your NTX one? Well, it's the yeah, NTS. That's one the that I've got yes, the, the cool yeah. thing. Um, I've I've just got it stock at the minute, um, which I'm, I'm pretty much because you, you can't save you know sort of presets on that thing anyway, can you? Oh, so yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so every time you turn it on, you try and kind of starting again. So I'm kind of you know thinking what basic wave shapes I want for a particular track, etc., and, and just sort of going from there. So oh, yeah. that makes sense. And the, yeah. there's a uh, it's saying it's got lots of electron minus the octa track. The octa track is kind of a product on its own, kind of just right mm -hmm. out there. It doesn't fit with yeah. anything else. I think, was it their no. first one? That was the first big one, anyway. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, they had sort of the oh, uh, what was the the early the mono oh, machine? No, no it wasn't there. anywhere near there first. It was oh. the first one was the was the uh, machine oh. drum. Then came the original keyboard mono machine. Um, Sit station and 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 Octatrack was fourth or fifth or something. Uh, yeah, Sit station know. was first, wasn't it? Oh yeah. well, if you want to be really picky you hey. about it, yes, the situation. <laughs> this is Mike Medlake. <laughs> yeah, you just you just corrected me, dude. That's that's major gold star on your little Kepler. <laughs> Neil Walton is saying the dirt box well, stuff for the NTS is good. Yeah, there's so right, I cool. love the idea that you can you can write this stuff in there. It's just fantastic. That's, that's something I want to do actually. Yeah, I do it's want to cool. get into sort of coding uh, stuff as well because that's what I do as a day job is is uh computer programming so i oh, could there's so, a little yeah. bit on the on the wiggly discord with just a couple of mm. people from way back who was um talking about doing some of the stuff of this and they were, i've got some stuff sent over i never managed to get anything working but a couple of mm. friends on there have done some really good stuff so if you pop on the cool. discord yeah well i should find the link uh, i tell you what, if you go to mrwiggly.co.uk there's an invite to the discord on the front page come join us and uh, you can talk wiggly 24 7 but you can also talk about uh, writing that kind of stuff and doing those kind of things so that's cool. Really cool excellent why are you saying gaz loves the octatrack did you does he so when you see him use it on the stream get my boy you know you're in trouble i didn't know gaz had an octatrack nice Gosh. there you go he's got so heavily into uh uh modular these days mind you it talks talks modular don't you so doesn't it so that's cool. i i've 
I've always found that the electron user interface is totally opaque to me. I need an alien brain implant to, <laughs> you know, I know people who are just incredibly fast with it, who can do these amazing things. And I asked them and they were just, don't worry, we can make you work <laughs> with this as well. <laughs> it's like all muscle memory. Well, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The um, I've got Inky's MPC here, and that's easier to use. I've got the Deluge, and that's easier to use. But there's something gnarly about the Octatrack that just it's just a sample mangler that you just can't. Yeah, it does stuff that other things can't do. Maybe because of that, that's why it's so complicated to do. It does very complicated things, but. Yeah, we were saying before we went live, it's one of those things where I get it, I play with it, I get used to it, and then I put it down, and then the next time I pick it up, I have to learn it from scratch again. And that doesn't mm. stick anymore. It's a, it's a weird one. Um, Brian, uh, you're playing live stuff. You're not using a door or a, a central Octatrack style, Delu style thing, are you, sir? No, usually it's more live. I mean, I'm running everything out of Logic to record it, but... Uh... Pretty much everything runs through a mixer, and by the time Logic sees it, it's already in two tracks. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm always live. Uh, have you got a central clock running from somewhere, or, or kind of uh, keeping sequences in time? Or it depends what I'm doing. You know, half half the stuff in here is a clock somewhere. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if I so if I get into the semi-modular stuff, you know, it's, whether it's the Defam, Supermonicon, or Mother Thirty Two, or the uh, Drum Brute. You know, whichever one's taking the lead runs the clock and everything else kind of follows. Yeah. We've lost hands. Sorry, I was just wondering where, uh, where hands is. <laughs> <laughs> How I rude. It, I think hands went out for a drink with Kent. <laughs> yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're buds. <laughs> okay, anyone in the chat got any questions for anybody? Uh at all in any way whatsoever please fire away because we're approaching nine o'clock which is normally my kind of uh bedtime but uh or at least stream stopping time dusty river saying you might need to do radio with your voice or oh, who are you talking about though dusty maybe you're talking about brian he's got a good voice too uh kent spong where the hell has he gone this is very <laughs> true can you tell me what's wrong I just loved it on, on the ProSynth. Was it ProSynth that he was on? He, came, he said, um, "Yeah, this guy came to my front door yesterday with 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 a synth to repair." And I opened the door, and he went, "Kent Spong, can you tell me what's wrong?" <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> yes, I've cracked it. I've cracked it. My jingles made it. It's, it's like Paul McCartney yeah. hearing the, the the milkman's whistling his tune as he delivered them. <laughs> Is that counts as public performance. Singing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> oh, Wagyu saying um the Soma Lab stuff is bonkers and amazing. I just have the Lyra 8. That's interesting. I was going to do um uh, uh, a kind of not a poll but ask if, if everyone likes Soma stuff. I don't think I've ever heard a negative reaction to Soma. Um and I'm a real big fan of of the kit and stuff. I don't own any Soma stuff, so I was kind of thinking about jumping into that um and if anyone had any feedback or thoughts the the, the people crazy. the people who use them really like them um yeah. i'm i'm still sort of wrapping my head around whether or not they'd be good for my workflow mm -hmm. um and i i'm trying to be really careful these days about what i buy uh but the people who use them the lyra 8 has a huge fan base and they're mm. loyal mm. yeah, I've, yeah I've got so, my, i mean that's um, where i got to I was, I was chatting to a mate and and i was just Do you know that's something it's like I don't think I've ever heard a negative word. Maybe, maybe that's a bit expensive. It's about as negative as it gets. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not. It's not a small investment, which is why I was going to ask if anyone's not, not, not asking for negative comments or anything. Yeah, I've got um, mate. Um, Rob, I've got mate Rob Dixon who goes by the name of Etch Sketch. Who that's kind of his combined with a modular rig. It's what he plays live, and mm -hmm. just ah oh, the the sound quality of some of those kicks he gets out of it is just mind boggling <laughs> you, you're um just you're so fat and clear and punchy just really good stuff yeah yeah that's what it My sounds like your your um <laughs> your stream's flowing it was really cool though it was going it's so good that 
<laughs> it's brilliant. It was a great moment. Um, and then it just just winds up and catches up with itself. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, lots of lots of chat stuff saying get the Soma Labs. Get the, Wagyu says get the Soma Labs cat suit for Mrs. Wiggly. That's uh, obviously a good idea. Uh, Soma's awesome. I love everything they make from Azio Head. This is generally what I've what I've heard. Mm. Some stuff is wild and off the scale, and the sound is huge. Talk to Mike Medley. Get a Cosmos. I don't even know what a Cosmos is. Fair enough. Gen no S, the radio signal thing. Yes, I saw that. It's a little box that just picks up random, yeah, radio signals. Not and even, you know, you know that's that's loud. exactly we we last I'm one of the last really really big CD releases I did years ago. Somebody brought in a short wave radio. And we just ran a. Uh, mm. We just ran a uh, an antenna up the tree outside the the mm. studio, and we fed a bunch of weird stuff in. It, it's fun. And yeah, Coma yeah. Electronic, the field kit, actually has a radio receiver in it. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. I was saying a couple of couple of uh, Sundays back. They, there's also online software defined radios now, where you can just you know effectively control a radio that's anywhere around the world, and they're all over the place. Um, and you get the you get the audio feedback. So. Um, you know, you can if you just want to find samples or weird noises or you know i know the service i've used it and i've got to look it up <laughs> yeah yeah it's just um just look for sdr online there's a load of people that you you can buy these boxes now that you can host and stick somewhere but yeah it's amazing it's really amazing i think people use it to test their transmissions so yeah. you can literally log in as it but if you just use it like a weird you know shortwave radio receiver mm -hmm. nice. and Wagyu, I would agree about. I don't know about Soma Labs, but Game Changer Audio are really, really cool. Uh, yeah, really yeah, cool yeah, yeah. Fat Dust was talking about that last week as well. Um, yeah, I actually, I had a, I had a plus pedal that I gave away to a friend who is in financial straits, um, and uh, he's a much better player than I ever was, and he's having an absolute blast with it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, I played with it long enough to realize, A, that it was an absolutely amazing piece of technology, and B, that it was <laughs> wasted on me. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll tell you what, everyone loves Soma. Uh, Ken Spong, Ken Spong, come back! Uh, has a mini <laughs> move, the radio signals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim Glue and me. Thank you, sir. Which artists inspired you when you began your musical journey? Jim, how about you? Oh, have you got... Um, oh, no, orbital. you're there. Sorry. Um, orbital. Yeah. Yeah, Orbital, Houston, London. Um, oh, oh, um, loads of war record stuff, Speedy J. Just... Yeah, there's uh, FX Twin, obviously. Stuff like that. It's just it's absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, FX Twin is a common, a common thing. I mean, when I was young, it was mm. more new romantic acts. And obviously, I mean, I played, I played keyboards for Boy George and all that lot back then. And that was kind of, so I brought up with a good diary of pop music. There was a band called Japan mm. back then who were kind oh, of all yes. new romantic. Yeah, David uh, David Sylvian yeah. and, and and actually uh, um, uh, Richard Barbieri now is a still a very well renowned. He's extraordinary. So he, he plays for uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Rain Tree Crow and all that. Uh, I can't think of the other thing. But uh, yeah, so they were great. That that's kind of what we got got me into. They they were kind of cooler than some of the sort of popular bands. So they were all Prophet Fives and. Mm warm sounds and stuff so that's kind of what got me into it whereas so the ultravoxes and those guys were were more of the of the oberheim style stuff which is equally as good so so yeah i grew up like when tube army was was like number one over here with our friends electric i was probably 14 or 13 or 14 just right just at the right age to be like this sounds great you know this yeah is, this is the future of music yeah so. stupid huge newman fan here Oh, it's just brilliant that track, and and a lot of other mm. stuff as well. So, um, and that coincided for me with I was doing piano at school, but getting a bit bored with it. And then synths came out, and were should we say affordable? So you've got something like the Juno Six that came out in the sixty, JX Three P, the Poly Six from Korg, and the Monopoly and the SH One Hundred and One, all came out around about that time, and were under a thousand pounds. Whereas everything else around that time, the Prophet Sixes and the and the, and the Korg Tridents and all this, they were un, unattainable at that time. But you could almost save up or borrow the money, 
um, to get hold of a synth, which is exactly what I did. I mean, luckily my mum lent me some money and, and I got a Jack 3P and, and that sort of kicked off my my career back, which is great. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of love for Game Changer Audio as well, Dr. Mike. So um, fab, fab company. Adapsky saying, I smell I smell an infamous Only Fools and Horses episode. <laughs> uh, Sunshine Group, good to see you on there, doing well. Cool, lovely to see you too. Um, another great stream actually with Sunshine. It was a really, really good one. Um, any of you guys have anything to plug or to talk about or to say or to share before we uh i've already in? plugged the hell out of my book and my radio <laughs> yeah. show so <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> well don't forget i think next week will be the launch of the uh of the raffle you too can own a book and thank you so book. much dom for doing that it, it means a lot oh it's andrew brooks really that uh sorry andrew martin taylor, not thank andrew, you very martin, much it means martin a lot taylor martin taylor martin taylor martin, martin yeah, congratulations enjoy more. so he was a very very kind person that did this which is really cool so if you um, to make me plug something uh yeah. go to the get somebody music channel and if you don't subscribe hit the subscribe button I'm at 493, trying to hit 500 sometimes. Oh, we can do this before the end of the show. <laughs> All right, hold on. So we're talking about yeah. YouTube here. Yep. All right, YouTube. Uh, let me just pop a link in there. We can do this. <laughs> uh, so, oh, yeah, we've got to get you to 500. So I, I heard your life changes at 500, and you know, you never uh, have to work keep telling again. telling you this. I, there's, there's, <laughs> once you get to 2,200, the next stop is 2 million, but never never happened right you're at 493 we need seven more subscribers please so out the youtube <laughs> link is going to youtube we just need seven people to uh get you up to the 500 which would be epic it's the least we can do so thank you very much for calling in um i have just posted i thought i was already link. subscribed but i wasn't so i have now cool 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 did my did my post yeah it did make the link it did subscribed so if you wouldn't mind, if seven of you at least could go and do that subscribey thing. 501 subscribers. Ding dong, there you go. As if by magic. Ask asking you shall receive. You know, one of these what I should have done. What I should have done was ask people to subscribe to my channel, but I'm not sure people would take my channel. I do all tutorials. I do all tutorials. I think most of them probably are to subscribe to your channel but thank you kent for doing that and thank you for paul you've done it dusty river done richard hilton's done it will just man you are amazing people thank yes. you well, thank you everybody you've changed my life irreversibly of course <laughs> while you're there if you happen to not have subscribed yet to the mr wiki channel and you have to be watching this obviously you know, pop over there and click that like and subscribe button that would be cool well, we um can go for 600 Oh, yeah. yeah, well, we could. We'll try it. We'll do it every week. We'll say, right, another 100 people need to subscribe to get so many before, uh, before the quiz. Oh, we have to do the quiz. Um, Jim, this has really yeah. been all about you for most of it. But obviously, uh, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a free for all towards the end. But I think we kind awesome. of got, got most of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right. I would but, like yeah. to know your favorite synth your desert island machine whether it's a, an electron thing or i would probably go for the digit act actually really wow okay, yeah cool. i think That's i could cool. do do an album on that with nothing else yeah wow yeah i felt like that with the deluge actually and they probably need some mastering but um yeah that's cool. Oh, that's not so many people's like um, on on so many people's desert island list. That's a really cool idea. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. yeah definitely. But yeah, if, if anyone wants to find out more, then go to my website, which is jamesglue.com. Which yes, James I've got that. G L E W. Let um, me just uh, uh, put that on there for you as well. Um, let's have a look. And then obviously my rather new Bandcamp page as well, which is jamesglue.bandcamp.com. Okay, so this is the website. Yeah. Uh, it also has uh, links to the track that I played. Uh, that's you. Uh, I don't have the, the Bandcamp link, but is that on the website? I'll put it on the... Um, yeah, it's on the, yeah, on the website really anyway. So Okay, I'll, um, I'll add it after, yeah, the, yeah. after the show, so we've got it. But yeah, hit that, uh, hit that link. Um, and uh youtube 
um, yeah, I'm, I'm on there somewhere. There's there's links from my my website as okay. well. But um, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not that much of a YouTuber, really, to be honest. So, so yeah, it's something else that I perhaps need to um, do a bit more of. <laughs> I but, think you just um, have to build yeah. everything. Now. You, as soon as you do that, yeah. you got um, you got TikTok, and you know, oh, it's just mm. a nightmare. But yeah, main thing doke. Do is actually actually play out live in proper venues uh, this yeah, year. Wouldn't that that's, be nice? I've been really hoping really that the, the Clown Fest stuff is going to kick off as well on a real, mm. in a real field soon. That'd be really, really nice. Yeah. Martin Taylor, You're big awesome. love for the Digitact as well. So that's cool. Yes. Um, let's just see where Get Semini has got to. 508. That's not bad, is it? So you've oh, got, cool. got 20 more subscribers before the end of the show. So that's good. Mr. Wiggly, what's the best bit of gear? You last bought well. Funny you should ask. I've got one of these. Oh yes, <laughs> this this is the greatest bit. I'm so excited, and I can't plug it in yet. This is um, a Fisher Space Expander. It has valves that go in there, which I've got, and it is inside, not rusty and everything. It does all work. And it's got the Fisher Space Expander logo here. And it has uh, this as well that goes with it, which almost looks like it should be mounted under your car. It's the Fisher Space Expander adjustable knob. And what that is, it was built by Mr. Fisher back in the 60s. And you would put it in line with your hi-fi. So you'd have your record deck into this, into your hi-fi, into the speakers. And it's a spring reverb. It's got a spring reverb tank that goes through it. And uh, using that, it would add dimension. It would ex Fisher Space expand your sound from your hi-fi. So it sounds really, really lovely. Um, and Mr. Fisher went on to virtually invent hi-fi to a large degree. He made the very first uh, solid state hi-fi amp and a load of stuff. He became a very, very successful, very rich man. But this was one of his early projects, which obviously didn't uh, catch on. And and there's a rumor which which went along that they put these in cars. And I think probably it's because that looks like a, an under dash mount, uh, which isn't true. Because clearly, if you mount, mount a spring reverb in a car, it's not going to do anything but bounce around and make a lot of It'd sound fun. cool. <laughs> so the reason I'm so excited about this is King Tubby, for all his dub remixes, used these because uh, it's the only spring reverb they could find or afford at the time. So all those early uh, Tubby dub splash sounds came out of one of these. Um, now, this is 110 volts. So I've just uh, apparently an adapter arrived whilst we were streaming uh, earlier. So it's arrived downstairs so I can get my 240 UK volts down to 110 and then I can plug it in and I can uh, I can make it work. I'm really excited. So that's that's the best bit of gear that oh, wow. uh, we got. Holy hell, Neil Wharton, 50 pounds for the missing tooth. Thank you so much, sir. That is incredible. Just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Big, big love in the chat for Neil, please, everybody. That is just exceptional. Thank you so much. Um, what can I say? Can I, I really just say to, today. Can I also say to Neil, uh, please get in touch, um, jimglue at gmail.com, and uh, and we'll we'll sort something out in Derby and try and get something. Oh, going it, Neil's in, the so. Derby, Neil. Right, brilliant. So I yeah, guess he might yeah. be new to the stream as well. Um, so if this is your first time, that is just epic. Thank you so, so much. If it isn't, I just haven't, I don't think I've seen the Neil in, in the chat before. Thank you. That really is above and beyond the call of duty. I'm very, very, awesome. very awesome. gratefully awesome. received. Cool. Thank you. What a lovely guy. So yeah, big love. And there is lots of love going on in the chat for him. Thank you. Um, as you heard is saying, I think you might like audio things, Alba Rosie dub station. I've looked at that. It does look really cool. Absolutely cool. Uh, Neil saying, I'm so sorry, mate. Been here a few times. That is terrible. As I was saying it, I was thinking, have I seen your name? Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Really, really appreciate it. And I will obviously big you up every time you pop in from now on. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just love, I got into dub quite recently, the last two or three years, and I just love some of those sort of clangy, dull sounds. And when this popped up in a reasonably good price on, on eBay for a reasonably good price for a rusty old burnt out bit of 60s technology i can couldn't resist it and it's got that really old clunky lead and stuff that comes out in terms of new stuff i've got um i've got inky's um mpc 
which is it's an NPC live, which is really cool. I really like that. Um, other than that, not much at the moment. I haven't really been buying much gear. What, what have you bought, Doctor Mike? Anything new? It's all about um, the um, hydrosynth, isn't it for you? I think. Um, well, actually, um, I've got a couple of small things coming in. Remember, my my trend for the past fifteen years has been every time I sell a piece of gear and don't replace it, I do more music. Um, I'm, I'm really heading toward minimal, but there are a couple of bits and pieces I'm interested in. I had a sculpt synth, a modal sculpt synth for a while and sold it and realized that was a really dumbass thing to do. So I'm going to replace it. And the, uh, the Keith McMillan, Keith McMillan and I have known each other for a long time and, and, uh, he's finally updated the QNexus, the little portable keyboard with better firmware and better hardware. And, and I got rid of my first one because it was just, it, it wasn't comfortable to play and I'm going to give this one a shot. So yeah, little things, little things. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And Brian, you've got the best Moog kit in the world over there, haven't you? Do you, do you need any more, or are you, you're pretty well covered? Uh, for keyboards, I'm covered. What I did just pick up uh, just around New Year's was a uh, RC505. Oh, nice. The new Mark II. I've got the Mark I down here, but yeah, wow. Wow. You've, got, have you got, you've actually got a Mark II in your hands? Yep. So, wow, I didn't think they were actually available properly. I, I don't, I don't know, know if... Uh, I don't think no. I can pick it up because it's got too many cables plugged no, in. No, 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 no. That's so cool. It's down oh, over there. Brilliant. Right next brilliant. to the computer. <laughs> That's Gaz's favorite thing in the whole world. And and honestly, they they are they are epic. Um Mark Rebier and all that more, but just just absolutely brilliant. But I've seen so many good performances with just simple loopers. Like there's something about that, they just got the design and functionality just spot on. Um, I'm not actually too sure what the new one does compared to the old one. I must I must catch up, but it you know hard to improve on the on, on brilliance but it just looks amazing i think you can is there any more channels in there or you can you can do undos more or something yeah i don't know what the old one did so i don't know what to compare them oh, cool. the, <laughs> <laughs> and i'm and i'm still figuring out what this one has in it so no, they are awesome they're absolutely awesome absolutely awesome ian dignan thank you very much for the five dollar five pound super sticker that's very kind um i'm 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 preempting the fact that the horn's probably at there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for once, I saw the sticker before the horn went off. It's got a bit, of a, a bit of a mind of its own. Actually. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, okay, well, I guess we can wrap it up. It's uh, a quarter past nine in the UK. Thank you very, very much. What a brilliant stream. D Dr. Mike, thank you so much for popping up. It always well, uh, livens up the show. And it's Well, thank you for not like you. booting me. No, uh, no, 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 it's brilliant to see you. It's absolutely wonderful. And well, uh, you know, I I hadn't realized what the timing was, and and I'm I'm very sorry to report that I'm going to be here a lot more often because <laughs> my Sunday my Sunday mornings actually wrap up, and I'll, I'm it'll be very rare that I'm here right when you open up, but I'll I can usually be here in time to catch your lovely ladies. That would be awesome. I'd I'd love to have you on. Spread the word. I mean, like yep. we like we said at the beginning, it's like. Um, we talk about since, but not that much, you know. It's more of, yeah, a, it's more of a chin and, out Sunday, so you know. It's a you know, and, and and if you ever just want to talk, talk, you know, you can always ask me. I'm happy to happy to Lovely. Pop in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Okay, thank you very and much. Thank you, you everybody, for your patience. I know that I that that you know, Robbie, Robbie's uh, out there somewhere, and and I've I've already ruined PSN, <laughs> and so uh, you know, this is you know, Ramsey's lucky because I, I'm not awake when he does his show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and thank you to uh, to uh, the, the, the Brian that gets so many music. You're loving your epic disco lights too, says Waggy, which actually is just brilliant. That's just like um, yeah, yeah. Turn the lights on for five hundred. So what? Sorry. I turn cool. the lights on for five hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's just check. Let's just check the. Uh, we should have a. We should have a live count next time. Pick a. Pick a. <laughs> pick someone to subscribe to and just have a, a totalizer up the side. I get Sammy. You're on five hundred and nine. Yeah. Thank you, everyone in the awesome. chat, so much for. Thank you so getting much. Getting involved on that one. Um, really, really good. And uh, again, everyone in the chat, thank you for the uh, the. Um, what's the word um donations the super chats and everything absolutely wonderful uh and anyone just watching thank you for the support it's absolutely brilliant and we love you and uh, it's turning into a really nice i mean this is episode 36 a really nice friendly group of lovely people so really really good see you same time next week maybe see if we can get rebecca if she's free uh, if any of you in the chat want to come on and talk about stuff, you're very, very welcome. Just pop me uh, an email or get in touch, mrwigley.co.uk. I'd far rather talk to, 
you know, the people in the chat than uh, many of the other people around as well. So we just wanted to talk about music. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you're going or where you're heading. If you've got anything to talk about, just come and talk about it. Um, lovely. All right. Well, uh, I think we'll say a big goodbye from all of us here. I will find the outro music. And like I say, same time next week. Everybody Thank stay safe and well, okay? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and the biggest thanks of all go to Jim Glee for being such a lovely guest. And for, and for oh, that thanks for having track. me. Great all track, right, Jim. So. Looking forward to chatting with you some more. Yeah, definitely, Mike. Look forward to it. Thanks, thanks, Dom. Thanks, everyone. Absolute pleasure. All right, take Cheers it easy, all. guys. See you soon. Take it easy. Cheers. Cheers. Connect so we see her mind Link up the harmonize, let's be termite But be an obsolete blessing, a birthright We live a life which all a lot for me no side Worldwide, cosmic love, energy, a book Purpose, I free, organic, I'll live this air worthwhile Watch the way one of you change your points In terms of definitions and so Termite, get side, check the eye One side is defined by one side, the other I, I, I am an idea, it's mine I assign to buzz up the qualities of my guy Who's we if I'm talking like there's two of me One is a construct, one is a creativity The supreme one, I'll encompassing information In and of itself, most definitely But rather life in it, most life in it Beyond the scripture, nice sense, niceness can be Blessed be, I tune you all in, sir Big up with being, I tune it in